Hey. It's, it's the day's finally here, guys. It's Friday. You know what that means. Actually, you may not know what that means. I'm starting a new D&D campaign today with on uh, Joe's channel. So in uh, three hours, I will be sending you all over there because it's the pilot of it. I'm very excited. I'm playing much as I have in the past with my last uh, and currently recent character. I am playing a cursed build. I have put together a new one. I actually had a brain blast about 20 minutes before I started the stream today. Message Joan was like, I'm throwing out half of my character's concept and I'm just changing it right now. I gotta follow my heart. Gang, it's fucked. <laughs> Gang, I'm doing like, you know how, I'm doing this, I'm doing a really cursed one. <laughs> this one, I don't know if this one will be good. I, with the slime, I I knew, I knew it. I know it'll work. With this one, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything because it's not going to be immediately apparent. But I'm excited. It's easily, it's easily the, I did math. I literally did math. <laughs> I did math and I weighed my RP options. And uh, when both of those came together, I decided to do something stupid. So we'll see. Math? Well, look, here's the thing. I am playing a character that would benefit greatly. And this is, I, I'm not talking about like any lore shit or anything like that, but I'm playing a character who would benefit greatly from having expertise in things, having like high skill, which is why initially I was planning on having them take a level of rogue so that I could get some expertise. I'm not doing that anymore. And I took a level of druid. <laughs> 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 I'm doing a druid dip. I'm doing a druid multi-class dip. Because I'm a psycho. But why? You just have to trust me. I have a plan. Plus our, plus our group doesn't have many casters. And I was like, if I could at least get a couple of extra spells at the low levels, that might be cool. That might be, that might be good for longevity's sake. If we have uh, someone that can do some like specific stuff. Cause ranger, rangers are the warlocks. Ranger, you know how warlocks don't get many spells in D&D? And are, like neither do our artificers or any of those. Rangers are like pathetic. Druids are really good, like Circle of Stars. I'm glad you mentioned Circle of Stars. Cause you see, that's the specific reason. That's that is the exact one I'm going to do. I'm going to Circle of Stars. Uh only only going to level two though. Because I want to get specifically the dragon constellation. To circumvent my need for Specifically, mathematically, my likely my need for expertise in the things I want to do. It's a super weird build I'm doing. You'll have to, you just have to have a little bit of faith. Plus, it makes more sense with my character, but you'll find that out in the story. It makes more sense than having a level of rogue <laughs> for me. That's mathematical. You wouldn't understand. Well, look, here's the thing. Here's the other thing I was thinking. Either way, there's no way I'm going to invest in Rogue in any character, frankly, all the way up to Rogue's subclass. I just would never do it. Three levels in any class other than your main one is kind of psycho. Unless, like, you're, you need it for build functionality. So, I mean, if I get deeper into this and I'm like, oh, fuck, I really still need those. I still need, to, I need a little bit more. I can always just put a level into Rogue later and get what I want. 
So it's like, I, I was like, I don't think I want to put it into it now and waste the... Didn't you take three levels in Wizard? Well, that's because I had to. You don't... Brett, Brett's rules stated that we couldn't go above level 10 in, in Phase 2 of IO. So that wasn't like a I wanted to. That was a I had to. That was built-in rules. There was no, like, trust me, because if I had it my way with Clarent, I would have never put any into Wizard. I would have gone full College of Eloquence because the level 13 and, like, 12 bard stuff for College of Eloquence is, uh, fucking, uh, wacky tier. So, uh, triple multi-class, oh god. Look, here's the thing. At the end of the day, it's going to be fine regardless because the first... <laughs> Alright, here's the thing. I... My stat spread is funny. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. My stat spread is funny, and I got some high highs and some low lows. So with one, I'm just going to take my first feat's just going to be skill expert, and I'm going to get what I would have gotten taking a level of rogue anyway. So I don't think I, I was like truly like the logic was my first feat when I get to level four in ranger or whatever is going to be skill expert. I'm going to get what I was missing that I wanted, and then I get to save a level. Because my stat array is so wacky that getting a plus one in something will ch will truly make up the difference. So, what ranger subclass? I'm not talking anything else about the details of my character currently. I've said all I want to say. It'll be good though. Will you play that Bug Snacks DLC? Dude, no, I don't think so. Uh, not because I disliked Bug Snacks, I loved Bug Snacks, but I don't feel any need to go back to that game. Like, I, I, I felt like it was finished. I don't think it needed DLC. Plus, knowing, spo spoiler ear, uh, plug up your ears if you care about Bug Snacks end of the game spoilers, if like you're still trying to get around to it. Uh, knowing what I know about bug snacks doesn't really make me want to have a whimsical fun time in bug snacks anymore. <laughs> like the plot quite literally discourages you from enjoying the game more outside of like just looking back at it. Like it's dark for me now. It's not something I, I'm like, ha ha hee hee. Let's go catch some bug snacks. Now it's like, ha ha hee hee. I know the dark truth about bug snacks. And it's not as much fun when you know that. Like, I'm fine with them releasing DLC, but I'm not going to play it. Like, it's free DLC anyway, so who cares? But, like, uh, I'm not. I got what I came for out of Bugsnax, and I enjoyed myself, but. Bugsnax sucks. No, it doesn't. Bug Snacks was a good game. Unless you mean like Bug Snacks, the concept of the Bug Snacks as a creature like species sucks. But the Bug Snacks can wear hats now. <laughs> that is true. I heard they can wear hats now. Look, the most important thing here's here, look, chat. Best takeaway for DD though. Just to loop back at it for a second, was I messaged Joe with a fun question that will never come up, but I want to check. And it's if I could shillelagh parts of my own body with the cantrip because I am made out of wood. And his answer was yes, which enter which activates a whole realm of scary possibilities for my character. <laughs> I'm hey, I'm made out of wood. You can't, you literally cannot disarm me. I can now shillelagh headbutt someone. <laughs> a better version of a monk. Well, yeah, but I'm not going to play like that, so it's fine. It's like, it's the same equivalent of what I could have done with, like, my mechanics as original base Adelward when he was introduced in Godforge, which was he was a better version of a rogue. In every single mechanic, mechanically, my character was a better rogue, which is why we didn't take certain abilities my class had, because we didn't want to make 
uh, Fabia looked like she was a subpar class because my character was broken. The point is that you can be given overpowered, crazy, stupid shit in D&D, but you should be able to read the room and be like, is this fun for everyone? And like pick stuff that doesn't, like that's another reason I, I didn't really want to put a point in the room because I don't really want to like feel compelled to step into the, you know, step in someone else's lane because someone else in the group is already playing a rogue. And I was like, I don't really want to like, I don't really want to like get in anyone's scene. It's like when someone takes like, it's like when there's a sorcerer in the group or a warlock in the group and someone takes a feat that gives them warlock abilities or sorcerer abilities and the people are like, hey, <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Uh, that's, that is my thing. That it, That is my thing you're taking. I find those things weird to begin with. You got a voice down for tree person? I do. It's not going to be... It's not going to be effortless like Slime Guy, but it's also not going to be like some crazy psycho voice because, again, this is a long-form campaign. And uh, I have to... Re I, I got to be responsible and pick voices that are smart. I got to. I can't do the voice, you stupid idiot. <laughs> I have to be responsible and pick a voice that I can reliably do every day, if it came down to it. So gamer tree, got it. So not Cheezle, dude. Jesse's got a range, and I respect that a lot. But uh, I couldn't do a Cheezle level voice for as long as he did. I just played a Gloomstalker in a campaign. That was awesome. My only issue with Gloomstalker is this. Okay. If your first round is embarrassing, that's your whole character. <laughs> and that was like enough for me to be like, I don't think I want a Gloomstalk. I know it's strong, but it's like, I know I roll bad a lot of the time when I'm supposed to roll good. I don't want anything to do with that. I just don't want to. I like to pick characters that can't fail. Okay, because I've played a lot of D&D at this point, and you can mechanically play D&D in a way that lets you pl like force the RNG into your favor, and that, I think, is a lot more interesting to me. Without using stuff like Lucky, using like mechanics that are built into classes, you can, you can sort of push yourself into guaranteed success in like fun ways. I think Lucky is beans. I regretted taking Lucky. I wish I'm glad Brett gave us more options to get rid of it. Cause now it's like, now it's truly like a, oh, that's boring. Isn't guaranteed success a bard thing? Oh yeah, no, Clint never failed ever. Uh, after, after level like seven, I don't think he ever failed one time. Well, that's because I had Portent as well. Look, if you want to be an unfailing bard that cannot lose, simply follow my build recommendation of going to College of Eloquence and then Divinity Wizard. Divination Wizard. And then just fucking skip any spells on the wizard side that proc any kind of attacks or saves, just grab support stuff, and totally ruin the game. Just ruin it. You only need the two levels or three levels. Just ruin the game for everyone. Go on, just do it. Do wizards get their thing at level two? Cause that's wild. I think they do. Just commit, dude, here's the thing. Especially with that silvery barb spell. Joe has that spell banned, and I don't blame him because I think it's stupid. I truly think that spell is dumb. Like, I, I actively wouldn't use it if I was playing with it. Like, as a player, I there are certain things where I have reached a threshold of game-breaking understanding where I'm just like, I'm not using this because I don't want everyone to think I'm an asshole. <laughs> I watched some of the Q&A thing the Godforged group did last Sunday 
And <laughs> dude, Sam threw me under the bus so hard for making a quote unquote meta character when I do not know how to stress how opposite Adelward is from a meta character. I could have made him fucked up. But yes, I did follow some advice from a guide when it came to Adelward, but it's not a meta guide. It was a guide to make a character that was quote-unquote viable in melee and adjacent to the strength of quote-unquote, and they did the math for this, which was the reason it was interesting to me, an eldritch knight. So I took some of the bones from that. So technically, I am no better in combat than an eldritch knight. <laughs> but I have better spells. That's that's all I did it for was I didn't want to make like a OP character. I just wanted to make a character that was adjacent to like a melee caster. Eldritch Knight is meta. Is it? I've never played it, so I wouldn't know. But Sam fucking threw me under there hard, dude. And that was after he messaged me at the end of the first session we did and was like, fuck yeah, dude, it sucks. <laughs> that exactly. Look, dude, you can counter Adel Word hard. Just get counterspell. <laughs> counterspell me one time and I will just do all right, you wanna know how you get me? You wanna know how you get Adelward? Dispel magic his mage armor. He doesn't wear real armor, he wears mage armor. Dispel magic my mage armor. Okay, that's how you get me. That's the secret. That's the secret ingredient. Just dispel my mage armor. I literally will be stun locked. <laughs> Counterspell tensors in Adelward sacks like warm lettuce. Here's the thing, I don't use tensors anymore because I'm at I'm at level seven spells now. So I just upcast Spirit Shroud again to get the same amount of damage, but without the downsides. I'm so powerful, man. Look, here's the thing. The only the only thing that I'll say that's meta with Adelward that I probably wouldn't do now that I like did it for a day and I realized how just obstruct, like how annoying it was both for everyone and myself, which I regret is, uh, the elven accuracy trait. Uh, there's a possibility I'll ask Joe if I can just like swap that out for something else because I don't enjoy having to do it every time. I think it slows down the game quite a bit. Not even not, not even an elf. Yeah, we called it uh we call it stolen valor. <laughs> Joe gave, I asked Joe permission to rename it because like all the racial locked ones are dumb. I think. If, if the DM's okay with it, I think it's fine, but I may end up being like, hey, can I just undo that feat and like do something else? Because I don't like having to type in the fucking like bonus damage every time. Like, I just don't, I'd rather not be. But hey, regardless of how much, how like obtuse it is to roll that damage and roll those attacks, I would still argue that I have some of the fastest D&D &D turns in the fucking industry. Like, my turns in D&D, &D, I move fast and hard, dude. I know exactly what I'm doing the fucking second my turn hits. Every time. I, my brain is moving a thousand miles an hour in the lead up to my turn every time. I'm dialed in. I'm fast. I literally know exactly what I'm going to do and eight different po like options of what I could do instead every fight. Sometimes it feels like Tomato never has turns. They go by so fast. Look, dude. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like, you know, rag on anyone that takes a long time, but it's like, I... I just, I just know the game at this point. I know the game. I know the game. I know what my character is supposed to do in a fight. And unless something crazy happens, I am on autopilot. I know exactly what has to be done with my characters.
I don't think anyone. Here's the thing. Unless unless the DM is stalling it for something, I think everyone should have a 60 second turn timer in D and D. You've got a lot of time in the lead up to your turn to retain and decide what it is you want to do. And I don't think there's much excuse to be taking more than a minute to input your instructions on what you want to do. Rolls, different story. If you're rolling and doing like the math, who cares? But if you are stopped, not doing anything, inexcusable. <laughs> At a certain point, inexcusable. You better be like asking the group if something's like a good idea or not. You better be, you better be consulting with the, uh, the council. Yeah. Someone asked if I'm still thinking about doing grave warlock, uh, grave uh, cleric on my slime. I don't know. I really actually have no current idea the trajectory of uh, Thursday's character. Because Brett's been giving me all kinds of ideas, and I'm just kind of like thinking about like letting them simmer and see what he comes up with and see what see what like the trajectory of the story goes before I do anything else with them. Look, I love to pre I to be honest, chat, when I make a character because I'm a fucking psycho and I like this part of I like the f combat side of D&D equally to the RP side, I do level them up to like level 14 to figure out all of their shit in advance. I know what my character I know which college my fucking level one character is going to okay when they're born i know exactly their like future employment options before they even learn how to walk because i'm an idiot <laughs> and then when i inevitably get an item that changes the entire trajectory of my character i have to throw out all my plants i'm too prepared <laughs> i see the code It's hard to resist not doing it, because, like, I mean, look, here's the thing. With the ranger character I'm doing today, I have to do a little bit more thinking because rangers are not good classes. They're not a good class. It's an undeniable reality that, they're, that they are on the lower tier. So I've taken a lot more time to be like, what do I do to make this fun and interesting in ways that aren't combat because I'm never going to be the best combat character but what I can do is fill eight other niches that the group would never ever have you know and that's fun that's also very fun streamer is a bad class <laughs> do you want to know what's a bad class Dreamer. Don't even pick it. Streamer minus five. It the stat spread is terrible. They have like one good subclass. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm going to be fair with Rangers on one thing. A lot of their subclasses seem to be very good as if the writers of the subclasses were like guys no one is ever picking a ranger if we don't make the subclasses good like so most of them are much better than most of the other subclasses i've seen like other they're much more influential towards like your actual character stuff you can do they seem to have a lot more flavor and like change your character a lot more than a lot of other classes in their subclasses. Which seems ne necessary. Since, uh, you know, <laughs> base ranger is kind of beans. Rangers having magic is odd to me, yeah. 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 I mean, like, that's the exact reason I'm putting a little bit in Druid is that ranger magic is so pathetic that like I'd rather put a little bit into some druid stuff so that I can like make the magic make more sense. 
Because otherwise, I do think it's weird that my ranger can like do weird magic stuff. Because it just doesn't, it just doesn't add up to me in my head. I feel like people maybe skip ranger and just do rogue in some melee class. Look, here's the thing: a rogue will do objectively more damage than a ranger as a bow character. <laughs> like that's the thing. Like ranger doesn't fill. There's a black hole. There's just this void where Ranger is, it doesn't know what it wants to fill. There's nothing, it doesn't fill a good class because every other class fills it already through a different kind of build. So Ranger is like a weaker version like of a Druid, like a martial Druid. You know, there's a fighter subclass that does bow. Yeah, but like magic arcane archer is the most embarrassing subclass uh, writing, I could write that class better, and I haven't played that much D and D, and I could literally write a better version of that class for them on the house if they asked. The Arcane Archer is truly embarrassing. If I was Wizards of the Coast, I would be embarrassed to still have Arcane Archer listed in my book. I would be embarrassed. I would say, I can't believe my, like, it, like awful. It's like, it's embarrassing. It's so bad. <laughs> Arcane Archer is super powerful, but it's fucked up because it's better than a lot of what the Ranger can do. No, no. Arcane Archer is bad. It's a weak, bad class. Its damage scaling is awful. Uh, you only get like two shots because it doesn't scale. Your amount of sh like shots doesn't actually match with like. You have to fix Arcane Archer to make it a decent class. You have to literally change the amount of shots you get, or it's just bad. Nah, I super disagree that it's good in default form. What the hell is this? Oh, I know this song. This is from the Sonic soundtrack. I'm gonna switch to this one. Just take two feats and it's good. Yeah, just take just take two feats. Just just invest two whole feats into fixing your class instead of actually making your character more fun. Hey, you shouldn't have to take things to fix something in D and D. You shouldn't have to. Every DM I've asked about arcane archer has always been like yeah in include these changes immediately if you're going to take it <laughs> immediately change your shots to scale with proficiency modifier please it's like automatic instant everyone just knows it's an easy fix but it's like it's underwhelming Where's the Yosahi music? Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Was that a typo? Look, here's the thing. Even the worst subclasses in the game uh, can be made good by a decent DM, even without any changes based on your items and, you know, your party. So everyone can have different opinions on whether or not something was good because context... And experience matters in D&D quite a bit. So, as an outsider looking in on specifically the numbers and what the character does, Arcane Archer is not a good class based off of exclusively its mechanics and what it says on paper. It can synergize very well with other things in a group, which might make it better, but looking at it as a bullet-pointed thing, not very good. That is officially my D&D &D talk for the day. If you want more D&D &D talk, we're doing three more hours of it after the stream in two and a half hours because we're doing the pilot of Joe's new show. He's been working very hard on it. Very hard on it. And uh, I am so excited to see him get to show off what he's been working on. As well as finally start playing a game that we've been planning for and by we i mean him <laughs> i've simply been a part of the cast uh that he's been planning for 
months. Months. Many months. So, cool beans. How much longer are we going to have to wait before the penultimate tomato schedule of D&D every day of the week? I am not t picking up any more games uh, of D&D currently. Three is fine. If one was late night, maybe. If one was like absolutely not in my stream schedule times, hard, hard, hard maybe, but the odds are likely never because the only DMs I know and actively play with, um, you know, I'm already playing with. <laughs> it's like, it would be it would be one of them asking me to play another campaign. I would just be like, what? I'm already in one. Invite someone else. Let someone else play. But yeah, nah. If it was like a if it was like a game at like 10 p.m. EST, like way after when I stream, then yeah. But I already have this one that kind of cuts into my stream time, which is fine because we're, we, we're planning. We're deliberately picking games that work for a shorter stream on days like this now. But um. Sunday is like a good example. I'm not doing any more that land like that. Because I have to I have to take care of my brand. How are you even considering this? You are addicted, you madman. I have fun playing stuff with friends and I don't have many other excuses to do stuff with friends because I'm a busy person. So having a locked in thing on the schedule that is also a show that I can, t can continue to say, quote unquote, that I'm working to my workaholic brain is about the healthiest and only way that I can continue to inter interact with my friends on a somewhat regular basis. Is that a good answer? That's why usually when someone asks me if I want to play in a DD and d campaign, I'm like, hell yeah, more time to play in a game with friends and like socially interact with people. I don't do much of that. Hell yeah. This guy loves social interaction. I just can't get enough. You guys know this. I, everyone knows me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a social being. I'm a social being. Everyone knows this. I'm obsessed with RP. Hey, Jay, I am going to take a bet, though, because we all know uh, the setting of Joe's campaign tonight is, of course, Norse versus, like, Greek mythology. So there's gods and stuff. I'm taking a bet that the first guy who gets the shit kicked out of him by a god will be my character. I am, I am officially betting hundreds of thousands of dollars on that. <laughs> there's no way my guy doesn't just get his shit kicked in by a god. <laughs> That's because you will instigate it. I'm not going to instigate anything. He inevitably. Inevitably. The, the face of your character is probably enough if I'm betting. Canonically, my character doesn't have a face. So how about you go ahead and learn the lore? How about you go ahead and look at some concept art, asshole? All right. Because the one thing my character can't do is tell anyone to look at him. Look at his face. Look at the, look at the, look at the expression he's making. Because they'll just, see a, they'll just see a helmet and there's nothing underneath it. He is... He is simply a robot. Made out of wood. Mm. 
Then how does he smile? He doesn't. Stop spoiling. That's not a spoiler. I, I said I was going to be playing Tree Guy in a tweet months ago, or I guess like a week and a half ago. You could have checked the image and been like, that doesn't look like there's a human in there. <laughs> because he was on fire or something. Plot ruined. Shut up. Motherfucker is Plank from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Because I'm made out of wood? Because my character is made out of wood? That's it? That's all? That's the only reason? Huh? To run on the face. Oh, that's actually a good bit. <laughs> that's actually a really good bit. Oh, that's actually a really good bit. I might rip that off. <laughs> At some point, I may make that a thing. Like a little, like maybe I just put a bucket on my head. <laughs> just put a bucket on my head and draw a face on top of the bucket. You see, all I need now is blind sight on my character. So I can always see with the bucket on. Will they ever become a real boy, Tomato? Dude. This is a new campaign that I truly know nothing about the trajectory of the plot for because I don't know... Any of the characters that are joining the party, well, at all. Like, I know what classes people are playing, but I don't even know everyone's names in the game. <laughs> so, and we've, we haven't had very much contact as a group outside of like, a, like the session zero we did like a couple, like a month ago. So like, who fucking knows what's gonna happen out there, man? Who fucking knows? You don't even know their names. Uh, look, man. Look. I don't have time for things like that. I just don't. I just don't have time. Who needs to know when you're a tree? I know, right? But chat, here's the thing. I do want to get in game quickly because I want to make sure that we're like able to get through a pretty good amount of stuff today before six when I have to stop. So that gives us about two and a half hours or so uh, to play before Joe starts up on his side. And then I send you all over there for the pilot. So uh, we're going to start right away. Okay. We are going to start right away. You didn't read their tweets? Question mark, exclamation mark. Does someone make tweets? I don't go on Twitter. I I could be, I, anything could be happening and I wouldn't know if it was only on Twitter, dude. I literally don't go on it. Betrayed. <laughs> Listen, even before that meme guy bought it for like a couple dollars. Okay, Twitter was already a shithole. That's all. <laughs> so I I don't go on there very often. I go on there sometimes to uh, feel slightly more relevant for a second when I'm when I get a when I get the feeling, but usually never, never ever. Oh no. Hang on, I gotta unplug my fucking capture. I'll just fix it now. It was doing that weird thing it does. 
You know, that thing it does. Is the audio uh, working today? Evidently, no. It's going to be one of those days. Hang on. Oh, my 4K capture completely crashed. All right, chat. Intro is being extended by two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we get a slightly longer intro today. We have no choice. Woo! All right, everyone shut the hell up. All right, it's working again. Hey, as we go in today, as we go in, I just want to say thanks, Penguin uh, Vagabond, for the 10 gifted subs. Thank you. Very kind of you. Very kind of you. Thank you. And TC Girl 8, thanks for the 1,500 bits. Sorry my first message on chat was PP -pee during the Stanley Parable stream. It was my sister, I swear. I truly... Would not have ever remembered that it was you who said pee pee during the Stanley Purple chat if you didn't just remind me and give me money to remember. So, from now on, mods, add a note to TC Girl 8 stating that they are the pee pee chat person forever. Thank you. Taint Steen, thanks for the gifted sub as well. Let's play the game. Let's play the game. This game's called Routine. We've got a lot of other games after this as well. Come on, Capture. Do Are we fixed? Nope, it's having a problem. Elgato, come on, man. What's your problem today? I paid $500 for you. You can't do this today. Please stop. Stop it now. This time for sure. <laughs> This time, this time for sure. Look, everything, this time for sure. I'm not seeing any more problems this time for sure. There we go. This is most unroutine like. I fixed it. <phone rings> 6 a.m. Another beautiful day. I have, I, I have to alt tab for a second. I have to close this. I'm so sorry, chat. It's so bright. Okay, I fixed it. There was a window open on my other monitor that was so bright, it was blinding me. <laughs> you guys want some coffee? Some delicious coffee. From the tap? I don't know about that anymore. Yeah, I use a, f I don't know, dude, I like, this better be, this better have a filter. <laughs> this better have a built-in fucking water filter in it somewhere, this machine. <laughs> it's boiled, it's fine. Bro, I don't know, dude. That water looks slimy because it came from the tap. Okay. How you all been? Yep. I live like this. Uh... <clears throat> Didn't realize until now that my, uh, welcome mat was backwards. That's, uh... That's a bummer. I have to put a filter in this thing and coffee. I can't just put water in it. What a day. What a day. What a day to be me. Let's get some fresh grounds in this thing. 
get some fresh ground. Classic roast. Yep. And a beautiful, slightly overcast day. Same as every other day. For the rest of my life. What? Elgato, what is your deal today, dude? Oh my god. Is this going to- Do I have to restart this fucking computer? I fixed it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> this is not very routine. <laughs> Time to check outside for animals, deer, bears. It's clear. I go uh, to sleep at a, obviously a 9 p.m. sharp every night. I get horrible indigestion if I don't. Horrible indigestion. Never mind, I wake back up at 9 and I proceed to watch some modern science television. What is this? Modern science. Controversial particle accelerator completed. Protests continue as activation date draws near. Well, isn't that... Look, here's... There's... Listen, there's no point getting concerned about every time some crazy scientist throws a particle really hard at another particle. All right? Because sometimes when you walk outside, you can simply light on fire and burst into flames because of a strange, anomalous, you know, chemical reaction in your own body killing you instantly without any chance to respond. So, like, what, what does it matter if a scientist throws a particle really hard at another particle? You know what I mean? Because spontaneous combustion exists. It is real. And it can happen. To anyone. So, there's no point getting outraged over things like this. Just throw the particle back. <laughs> I wake back up at 6. A.M. sharp. I wake up and I make myself another delicious cup of coffee. Everyone knows how this goes. I make a cup of coffee. Lovely kitchen setup, though, here. This guy, this guy's really got a nice, uh... My mouse isn't locked to the game. There we go. This guy's got a nice set... Is that an electric, uh... Is that an electric stove top? I take it back. Boo! Boo! Boo, man! Boo! What's wrong with elective, uh, electric stoves? Shut up, idiot! <laughs> Everyone boo that guy, too! Boo! I would sooner, even if news articles came out confirming what I already know, that my gas stove ejects tons of methane into my air supply every day, slowly killing me, I would still willingly let my gas stove leak into the air than get an electric stove in my house. I would rather breathe in chemicals for the rest of my life and slowly die than use an electric stove. Hang on, I gotta make the coffee. Look what you did, you ruined my morning. You ruined my morning. Jackass. Nothing that fresh ground coffee can't fix. Even though obviously this is not fresh ground, I would have to have a bean grinder to make fresh ground, which by the way, it's worth it. It's worth it. You can't say you like coffee and then have pre-ground coffee. You're a sicko if you do that. You're sick. You're sick and twisted. You're a beanlet, if you will. Double points if you have one. <laughs> I was about to reference. I was about to reference that really bad coffee me and Dave talked about, but I'm not going to. I'm better than that. Beautiful day today. Another day. Another day outside. I'm mean, gonna just make sure there's no. Moose or bears jumped over the fence because oh, 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 there's actually a dead person in the back of my house. I cannot do this before I get coffee. I just can't. <laughs> Look, he's not going anywhere. I'm gonna let that coffee brew. 
Ew. They jumped my fence without shoes on. Gross. What a hassle. Hey, are you good? Do you want... Do you want coffee? Want any coffee? They're probably just drunk. Man? Bro? Get out of my yard. Bro? Hey, wake up and get lost. Ow! Ow! He just punched me in the nose and left. No. Oh. Are we in? Did I just wake up and knock him out with a punch? Are there multiple endings to this? Because considering it's saying ending loop, I'm guessing there's multiple endings. You knocked yourself. So I. This particle accelerator inevitably created some kind of time loop. No, this is the entire game. Well, look. Chat, it's short game night. So if it's short, that's fine. I got like 18 other games to play tonight. But I do want to make... Have I been taking my pills every day? Look, let's just make sure. It's not like it takes that long to check. <laughs> I can't move with W A S and D. I make a coffee, as I do every morning. There are multiple endings, yes. Okay. And I'm going to carry on till I see something that lets me pick a different thing. I didn't take my normal pills. That was my problem. I also didn't filter my coffee. Yep. And the delicious cup of coffee, as always. As always. Head on over outside. Oh my god. Is this death loop too? I fucking wish. And a beautiful day. Just like every day. When 9pm comes around. Naturally, I go and take a look at my magazine. Oh. Oh, I see. Maybe, uh, maybe we don't read about the uh, particle accelerator. Maybe we watch some TV. Strange objects in the sky. Is that, an, is that a ship? Is that a spaceship from EDF? We're gonna go to sleep. Then. Joe, thanks for the thanks for the raid, man. Thanks for the thanks for the raid, man. Uh, welcome everyone. It's the first of all, it's 6 a.m. So uh, if you don't be so kind as to be patient while I grab my coffee, that'd be nice. Um, but uh, this is the waiting room for Joe's campaign that starts in two hours. A uh, lovely waiting room for that. Should I make some coffee? Just whip up a quick, a lovely brew of delicious coffee. Chat, here's the thing. I wanted to start with this game first because the second and third game I have picked are so unbelievably cursed that I feel like we need to start slow. <laughs> I felt like we need to start. I felt like we need to start with a little bit of a calm one because uh, the next one I have after this is evil. Let's make a. Delicious cup of bean, uh, ground bean coffee, as always. And get that brewing. Look, chat, that ship was moving slow. Very slow. So likely, it won't reach wherever I live. In generic suburbia for quite some time. 
I've seen this movie before. Hang on. I know how this plays out. I'm not going anywhere near that guy. <laughs> what? It's the man again. It's the man again. He's going to... I'm going to come out there. I'm going to fucking... Is it, is it going to be an alien dressed up like a man this time? Or is he going to punch me? Oh! Oh, my God! Man! Holy shit! Go back inside! Go... I didn't see that one. Honestly, I did not see that coming. <laughs> uh, that was a that was a full zero to one hundred. Uh, so much faster than I could have. I want to see the last one. Let's see. Let's see the last one. Then, we, then we'll move on. Another lovely six a.m. Another lovely. This is the same people who made the dog game. Well, this is made by Corpse Pile, who made, uh... We played a game from them very recently. They also made that Bad Ben game that I played. The Man Man. The, that, that ragdoll serial killer one. Ah, uh, yes. A delicious cup of brewed, fresh ground coffee. A delicious cup of brewed... Fresh ground coffee bean coffee. Still using tap water. I refuse to deviate from the routine for even a second, so how about you shut your mouth? Hmm? Hmm? Besides, I like the flavor of the of the fluoride. I like the flavor of the chemicals. I liked <laughs> nothing wrong with tap water. <laughs> All right, I was just saying that stuff to lure out the freak. Chat, look at that person. Look at what they just said. Look, look at them. Sickening. Well, 9 p.m. comes around and after my late night nap, I wake up and I go back to my television. But this time, I check the local news, perhaps? Listen, chat, science is scary, and so is modern-day television. But you know what's even scarier? Local news. Search for local missing man continues. Protests at local university over particle accelerator. Real estate company being investigated for violating stigmatized property laws. The stock market is down! I invested in RTN. I pass out on the on the sofa. I immediately pass out. Oh, oh, my mommy! I wake up, I go back to the coffee. I make one. And I pray with every fiber of my being that I don't find a unconscious stockbroker trying to find any semblance of a life in this post-stock collapsed world out in my yard when this coffee is done brewing. We got a first time chat message from Cloud3121. They say cracks. <laughs> there it is. Let's brew up some coffee. Some delicious bean coffee. Pure, rich taste. Get that cooking. All right, chat. So what do you think the odds are that we see like a half-naked, unconscious man in our backyard again? Oh. Okay, well, look. Here's the thing. All I saw in the newspaper article was... Cars driving. <laughs> and, like, some people were a little angry. So, really, the worst that can happen is that I get hit by a car. But with so many people, like, so many, like, fences and, like, houses around here, it feels unlikely that I will get hit by a car. I believe this may, in fact, this time simply be a sleeping man. Here I go. 
man. Check left and right for cars. I think we're safe. Man? The stock- Hey, man! I'm checking the stock market today! The stocks are back up, man! You have to trust me! Don't punch me in the nose. Don't just do punch nose ending. I'm bringing them inside. I'm gonna show them the stocks. In my secret stock basement. This is where I keep all the stocks. He can't get out again. I have to keep him hidden. No one likes him anyway. I have to keep him here where it's safe. That's my, that's my stock guy. He's the guy I have that does all the stocks for me. No one likes him anyways. No one likes him anyways. Dodoy. <laughs> Your Honor, yeah, sure I killed that guy, but no one liked him anyways. <laughs> Next game. <laughs> Fun little thing. I'm going to set the category to spooky now. So be, be wary. It's about to get even spookier. Be careful now. It's about to get real spooky. First game on the spooky list. You guys are gonna love this one. Like you're gonna you're gonna love this one. Okay. I'm not going to show you the name of the game. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put us in it. Welcome to the No Snake Hotel. The only hotel hey, with a 99.99% no snake guarantee. Just get in the No Snake Hotel. We pride ourselves in our incomprehensible lack of snakes. At other hotels, you run the constant risk of finding a snake in your bed sheets, a snake in your toilet, or even waking up to a snake sliding down your throat. Oh. Oh. What you think? Call the front desk for questions and enjoy your stay at the No Snake Hotel. Yeah, I've had a, I've had a couple of run-ins with snakes, specifically at my hotels and motels, which is why I have personally invested in exclusively going to no, like no snakes allowed hotels. Uh, so naturally, I just arrived at the hotel. Good golly, Bart, this place is immaculate. You know how much I hate snakes, so I went out of my way to stay at the No Snake Hotel. They've really done it, Bart. There are absolutely no snakes in this hotel. Good. <laughs> Good, as they should be. I hate snakes. Prove it. Chat, we've lit, we've, the, the rugs are actually coated in a poison. That po it, it kills you on contact with your skin, so everyone has to wear shoes in the hotel. But any snakes slithering on the ground would die on contact with the rugs. Prove it. I don't need to. I gotta find. I gotta find room one hundred. That's my room. The room in the snake hotel. That's my room in the snake hotel. So, hello. Wait. I don't have to be scared of footsteps. Snakes don't have feet. These are my footsteps, and I don't have to concern myself with anyone else's, because snakes don't have those. <laughs> I'm living the dream. I didn't think it was possible, but I sure am happy it is. The No Snake Hotel really lives up to its name. Ever since I was a little girl and got abducted by an army of rabbit snakes while on vacation, I haven't left my house. After 50 years in solitude, I finally have a safe space where I can vacation. Thanks, No Snake Hotel. The amount of times I've seen snakes just grab children. 50 to, 50 to 60 wild snakes just grab a child and haul them off into the woods. I'd run out of fingers counting. Yep. Run 15, 114. That person must be scared of snakes. 113, 112. 10, that's not mine. 11. They're everywhere. Except here. I feel safer than ever here. One time at some other hotel, I walked into my room, and when I turned around to shut the, da the door, there was a snake as long as my arm dangling from the coat hook. But here at the No Snake Hotel, I don't need to worry about what creepy, slithering creatures might be standing behind me. <gasps> 
It's just a normal scary hallway with flickering lights at the far end. Uh, with ominous sounds emerging from it. But what I do see is, in fact, no snakes, which makes me happy. That does sound like a ghoul. That sounds like a ghoul or some kind of demon, but it does not sound like a snake because I know the sound of a snake, and the snake goes, and that was like a, which is different. And that's why I know I paid a lot of money to go to No Snake Hotel. Because of its No Snake Guarantee 106, 105, 104, 103, 102, 101, and it looks like my room is past the door with all the blood in it. But fortunately, what I do know is that that blood was not created by the snakes, and therefore it is fine for me. There's nothing to be concerned of, chat, because there, in fact, are no snakes in this hotel, as we've all learned to understand. Oh! 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 Get my room, we can tell someone about this later. Just... Did you guys see the size of that one? Better hotel better hope that's the last of them. I'm gonna get a refund. Oh! <laughs> it's out of here. All right, well, that's Snake Ho No Snake Hotel. Uh, when I get out of that one, <laughs> it's going to be a... That's going to be a lawsuit. Next game. Next game, dude. Let's just get on to the next one. No point wasting any time, chat. This one's the, um... This one's the, uh... We're gonna play. We're gonna play this one called "Fear the Spotlight" first. I'm saving the last one for last because it'll likely run the longest and is objectively the most unsettling. So we're gonna play "Fear the Spotlight" next. This is a demo. Cozy game paths. Routine has more endings, by the way. That's fine. We got a lot of stuff to go through today. Fear the spotlight. Camera turn. Yeah. Okay. Cozy game. My friend Amy was supposed to meet me in the library after school, but she never showed up. I searched and found her wandering into a section of the school that was burned down years ago. I know I'm not supposed to go up in here, but something is up with Amy and I have to find her. Amy? Amy, you mischievous rascal, where are you? I, I I had to rechain the door behind me. This place is so off limits. You gotta get out, you gotta come out. Amy. Amy! I'm telling! I'm going to tell! Somewhere. Where are you? I'm going to find you, my little starlet. Wow, that happened very fast. I was not expecting the monster to come around the corner within, uh, what was that? What was that? Uh, less than 30 seconds before Spotlight Man came? Look, good news is Spotlight Man is completely blind unless he's looking at you with his spotlight, so we're just gonna kinda carry on with our lives. Spotlight Man, in fact, cannot see without his spotlight. It's an inhaler. This will be helpful if my health is ever low and my lungs need some relief. Hey, you look like one, you do look like someone who probably needs an inhaler, but simultaneously, that is not a medical tool that will heal your injuries. It will help your lungs for a minute. 
Wow, dude. Dude, everyone I knew, including me, when I had fucking big-ass glasses in middle school that looked like a dork had asthma, okay? I'm not saying that that stereotype is realistic, but unfortunately, as far as my school was concerned, it literally was, okay? If you had glasses, you probably had an, you had, you probably had an inhaler. <laughs> I'm just saying, I was one of them. And God, I was immortal. You know the amount of times that someone, like, tried to, like, beat me up? And I would say, just give me one sec. And I'd reach into my pocket, pull out my inhaler, <sighs> inhale one time, and then grow five feet. And all my muscles would, like, inflate. And I would become incredibly powerful and pick them up and throw them into the sky. Every time. Like Popeye and his spinach. People were scared of me. Mr. Crane drama class, the door is locked. Well, my lungs are good. <laughs> I have a letter for Amy. It's a letter I was going to give to Amy, but she never showed up at the library. I have a flashlight and I have my inhaler. Hello? Amy? This place doesn't look very burned down. It looks more abandoned. Mrs. Bowers' journalism class. Amy. I don't understand why you came here today. It's a handwritten note. It reads, did you hear? Amber got sick, so now Chrissy is getting the lead in the play. Of course we get skipped over for the part. Ugh. I convinced Bobby to steal the drama room key, key so we can ruin her costume. He's such a sucker for me. Mel. I guess bullies exist in every generation. Oh, you guys remember these things? It's an old projector. It looks like the power switch still works. Dude, one time. Okay, you wanna know what's actually, I, 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 we actually have like a horror moment in uh, in like my high school, like my middle school when these things were like a thing people used. A spider ran over one while it was projecting. That was a bad scene. <laughs> that was a bad scene. That was a bad scene, dude. That was a bad scene. I bet I could fix this projector with the right materials, like an inhaler, perhaps. Can I read the note that I, I was given? What does it say? I really poured my heart out in this letter. I hope I can give this to her. What have you got a crush? <laughs> You got a crush, you dork. <laughs> uh. <laughs> She's dead. <laughs> She's dead. Amy's dead. You got a crush? That's cringe. Nerds can love too. <laughs> Imagine liking someone. Imagine having any kind of affection towards another human. Gross. <laughs> and unnatural. It's a clipboard that reads, please provide your birthday so we can include you on the monthly birthday celebrations. I'm not reading out any of these. Cake will be provided at each celebration. Just lie. Just lie so you can get the cake earlier. What? It's a tube with a poster in it. The poster is for school play. It has a picture of two people holding hands on it. Strange. What is that? Some kind of physical affection? I disagree. With that being allowed in any kind of public environment. This locker is locked. Looks like I can open it with the right combination. 69! Dude, that's fucking funny. You can tell. You can tell someone consciously typed that in at the school. And was like, ho ho ho. Wait, hang on. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes, it is funny! He does this for a living. Yes! Yes, I do! It's funny every time. Yes! My character can't run. So I'm not sure what, what she needs the inhaler for. Her ma this is her max speed. Amy! 
Amy! Where the hell are you? Why don't you just come out? Amy! Didn't I try going in this room and it was locked? Mr. Crane drama class, door is locked. Can I examine this? Looks like someone is behind this couple. It's kind of creepy. Let me take a look at the projector with this poster, I guess, because there's literally nothing else to do in the entire map. I'm going back to the projector, which surely has power. Of course, of course the projector has power. That of, co of course the projector has electrical power still. The light bulb inside isn't turning on. Just use a flashlight. <laughs> Just use a flashlight for it. Are you, are you, what are you, dumb? It's a school newspaper. It reads Sunnyside News. The premiere of the Phantom of the Opera will be coming this fall. We interviewed the teacher in charge of the production, Mr. Crane, about the show. I can't believe the school had a newspaper and drama club. They didn't bring these back after the fire. You would want to, you would care about that. It's an inhaler. This will be helpful if my health is ever low. Did I already grab this? Well, I need to find the light bulb and there's nothing else in this room, so I guess I did miss something outside. Because that's, that's just the birthday note. That doesn't help me. Or I would have to open this locker lock. Which I don't think I have any clues for. Wait. Hang on. One, two, three, four. Surely they're not dumb enough to do the easiest trick in the book. One, two, three. Wait, hang on. There's a five there. Hang on. My strat, my plan. O three O three one O. I mean, I guess I can try it. O, three, one, O. There's no reason they would give birthdays. Uh, like these birthday things, unless they wanted us to use them for this code thing. So it's not Bobby. Oh, I guess I just go down every single one of them. Yeah? There could be a locker missing, so I'm going to do 0915 next. Brute force time. I'm not sure what else. This is obviously the thing. It'd be stupid to give those in the 09. It'd be stupid to give that info without this being the solution, right? 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 It's not that one. Th this is pointless info. That or it is like 69, 69, something hilarious. 0517. <laughs> when are these is gonna open it? Oh. Five, seven, got it! It was just guessing! Jackpot, I'm in. It's a key with an engraving that says drama class. Let's get out of here. Oh my god! Eek. Get evaded. <laughs> it's fucking locked! Good music. Good lighting. He's gonna have to do a lot harder than that, though, to uh, get me. There's a bunch of old scripts and stuff for the theater class. There's a bunch of pictures of the students, too. They look like they're having fun. That girl in the first picture looks like she's about to cry. <laughs> What do you mean? That looks like they're having fun. <laughs> they look like they're t they look like they're holding back tears. <laughs> Don't look at me. Some people just look sad. Wait, is this my friend Amy in here? There's so many pictures of her. Wait a second. No, this can't be her. These pictures are dated for 25 years ago. <laughs> wow. Sure looks like her though. Weird. Is Amy? What are you, dumb? Shh. 
sure hope a fucking monster doesn't show up, dude. I'm spooked. Cool. How quaint. It's a photo of the school, but there's something odd about it. It looks like there's something behind it. Oh my god! What the? There's a panel back here. That means nothing. This is a school. <laughs> this could be anything. This could be literally anything. <laughs> this isn't like, this is a giant fucking school. It could just be an electrical panel. I'll need some way to remove these screws so I can look behind this panel. Okay. Pick up this bat. It's a tube with a poster in it. The poster for a school play. It has a picture of a girl on the stage. Looks like a bunch of awards for the drama teacher. It must be old since we don't even have a drama class anymore. This one says, Teacher of the Year. There's a yearbook snippet for the dreamiest teacher. And it goes on. Dreamiest teacher. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you can't do that! Oh no, it's that thing again. I need to find a way out of this room. I need to sneak past it without it letting it see me. Kid, are you having a fucking asthma attack right now? <laughs> you haven't done anything yet. You can't have an asthma attack yet. It doesn't attack, it just looks at you? Weak. Weak, I thought it would chase me or something. It just looks at me? I'm out of here. It's just got a laser. It's a demo, they got time. I, I assume it would be like, and like get you. She's just got social anxiety. She just doesn't want, she's scared of being in a spotlight. What did I gain from this? I got another poster. I wonder what she was singing. Wait, but I didn't like get any, I didn't get anything to help me. Guess I can technically go back into the trauma room. Get ignored monster. Yeah, I mean, it's like the, here's the thing. I got beamed by that fucking laser for good like three hits and it says my lungs are good. I need to kill- here's the thing, you wanna know what I better gotta do? We have to kill it, decapitate it, and use its head as the new spotlight for the projector. It's simply the only way. We gotta get back over there. Hey, Jackass! <laughs> this character is never gonna die because she's lung built. She's like me. She's just like me. And that's why I know that she's the most powerful character in this plotline. She's a lung build. Can I just go back in here? Will he like be following me still? Surely there's... Ah, I knew I missed something. There's a thing up here. It's a script for the school rendition of The Phantom of the Opera. On the cover it reads, starring Amber. The name Amber is crossed out and written above is Chrissy. You cross Nick Amber's like actually some kind of ghost? Oh my god. Oh my god! Now where the hell's... Y you know, if this game makes sense, I should be allowed to use this key to remove the screws. Unbelievable. This game does not make sense. This game doesn't make sense. This game's making it up as it goes. Can I go in here? This is the only place I haven't checked out. Oh, yeah. Wow, this is nice. Hang on, this changes everything. Looks like a poster. It used to be here. There's a placard underneath that reads, A fate split between death and love. 
These two probably die. It fits. No shit, you stupid idiot. It's a poster. Are you dumb? What's the matter with you, bozo? It's a tube with a poster. The poster for a school play, it's a skull with a boy's face on it. Looks like a poster used to be up here. There's a placard underneath that reads Spied Lovers Meeting. Don't think so. Looks like a poster used to be here. Uh, a dazzling performance. It fits. Shut the shut up, bozo. Just stop. Oh, whoa. Looks like a hanged man on it. Hang on, what, what did it say here before? It looks like a poster. A tragic beginning. Sure. Can I pick this one up? Two people holding hands on What did this one say before? Fate split between death and love. No, I'm pretty sure that one's the skull. <laughs> pretty sure this one's like... I don't know. I feel like I've already gotten the gist of this game and I'm almost ready to move on, but I'm curious if I can just kind of one shot it, you know what I mean? This has something to do with death and love. Finish the game. Something isn't right. Look, the monster wouldn't even chase this chat. I want to move on. We got so many other games tonight. The monster wouldn't even chase it, just looks at us and it gives me asthma. It's not a scary monster. It's got scary music, but look, it's just gonna look at me. Ow, my asthma. And then I hide again and my lungs get a little bit, it gets a little bit harder to breathe and I poke my head out and then I get asthma again. That's its power. It can't even hit me right now. It's just I'm gonna walk to move into a better position to hit me. I am like a god compared to it. Ow. I have to take my inhaler. I feel much better. <laughs> Don't mind me. The real danger was never the monster. It was my asthma. <sighs> Next game! No! Alright, Chad, this one's the, uh... This one's the um, premium one of the night. It's got a lot of story to it, but that's because it's a genuinely, this one's good. Should have time to finish it tonight. This one is called Growing My Grandpa. I'm going to go to the bathroom and then we're going to start. This one's very unsettling and creepy. This it's Trust me, it's going to be good. This one's good. I'll be right back. You guys ever just go to the store and buy one of those, like, put it in water for four days and, like, a cool thing will grow out of it? That's how grandparents are made. That's how they've always been made. Ask your parents where your grandparents came from. They'll tell you they grew them in a big bucket of water. This game is designed to be played with a mouse, blah, blah, blah. It's going to give us a small tutorial for how to play the game. You guys don't need to worry about that. I'll just do it all quickly. Blah, 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 blah. Move these things around. This game has a uh, interactive trash mechanic. It's very important. All right. Week one. Hang on, I gotta make sure it's set back to full screen. Blah. I excused Adrian during music class today and spoke with her about her recent string of demerits. It was our first time meeting outside of our quarterly evaluations, and I believe it went well. 
I can certainly understand Mrs. Richardson's classroom observations concerning Adrian's emotional state. She was, of course, intensely shy when we first met. As I understand it, she's similarly withdrawn in her classroom activities and only speaks or acts when she absolutely must. Some things she simply will not do. Instead of participating in mandatory group activities, she will sit alone and accept that she will receive a demerit. Before the meeting, I read Mrs. Richardson's parent-teacher report, which allowed me to estimate some about... Adrian's home life. The parents are well-educated and come from a prestigious background, but they lack time to properly nurture Adrian. She's often alone, and when she's not, the parents seem to not understand the importance of warmth and of affirmation when dealing with someone so young. Having two parents of this reserved and icy temperament exacts an inhibition in a child. A child's imagination is subdued, but only ostensibly for it eventually finds its way into regular life. I surmised that I would be able to reach out to Adrian by way of make-believe. Ew! Ew, gross demon child! Disgusting! You live like that? <laughs> you live like that, you little freak? You little weirdo! Someone, so, someone done, like, Put your face underneath like a goddamn like like fucking hair dryer and melted it. You got melty face. How are you liking your new house? You've told me you used to live close by, but it still can be a big adjustment, a new room, a new school. The the basement! I like that. The basement? Yeah, well, there's a lot of Cool stuff! Mom and Dad sent me down there! Your mom and Dad made you go? Yeah, there was a lot of cool stuff! Well, that's not why they sent me down there, though! Why did they send you down there? Fighting! They were fighting, shouting! I came in to help and they shouted at me! They said, go clean up downstairs, so I went! That sounds tough. Did they fight a lot? No! Well, they, uh... It's alright, Adrian. Maybe you can tell me more about the basement instead. Okay, well, it was weird at first. It stunk, it smelled, it was gross, it was boring. I hated it, I hated every second of it, but it was also cool and epic and rad, and I found something living, it was alive. There's an alive thing down there, kind of. What? That's very interesting, Adrian. Tell me more about that. By indulging in her fantasies and stories, I was to glean more of an understanding of Adrian's anxiety surrounding her home and parents. The symbols of Adrian's story seem to carry their own traumatic weight, and her exploration of the basement may very well be a vehicle for the conveyance of her anxiety. Whatever might come of our next meeting, whether she will engage in similar make-believe, I will set down her story here. Adrian's story begins with her delving into the basement with a trash receptacle and the goal of cleaning up. She discovered one of the walls was covered in plastic bags. She went to investigate, intent on tearing away whatever they covered. Ah, uh, yes. The trash. I will clean it of trash. The trash has been cleaned off of the bags. Upon removing the plastic trash bags from the wall, she noticed their interior lining was covered in glass, like a window. I offered, no, she said, like a mirror, reflecting inward towards the animal they covered. Gently, I asked her what animal exactly it was. Here's where the material reality of the story took a turn for the explicitly fantastic and imaginary. Upon her discovery of it, at her gaze, it grew or extended its shaggy hair itself. Hair like fur, like a dog, I offered. No, she said. Not the fur of a dog, nor the hair on her head. It grew out towards her, the animal's hair reaching out. It was hard, standing almost straight, like the hair on a brush, a bristle, she, uh, I offered. Yes, she said. She was very afraid at first, but then very curious. I asked what else was in the room. More things hidden away, she said. Things of Grandpa's as well. First she found a hidden passage under the stairs. Spoiler. Inside were strange dolls, magic objects, naked faceless figures. 
I heard these cryptic utterances and merely nodded. In order to keep the game of make-believe going, I only, pressed, I only pressed for details where I thought necessary. The faceless dolls could be a simple metaphor for the anonymity she feels in her own home. The hidden passage, I, I don't know what that means. The revealing of the concealed seems to be thematic in her imagination and her fantasy. The door under the stairs is but one example. Hey dude, have you thought maybe this is real? Guys, just don't touch the weird black mold, okay? We just won't touch it. The therapist doesn't think it's real. Uh, we'll just take a look around without touching it. This corner, kind of just dark and scary. The darkness of the shadowy corner unnerves you. You cannot explore here without some form of light. We could play around in the trash or we could go beneath the stairs. I just clear off some of the trash first. Once she removed the panel and found the magical hidden passage, she was very specific about what she took. She found a magic book, a magic doll, a photo of her late grandpa, and magic glue. Take doll. You hate to see that underneath your uh, stairwell. You just hate to see that underneath the stairwell. I don't like that. That's some kind of goblin. A slouching doll. Its material is rough and coarse. Check the closet. Just gotta clear out some trash here. Get rid of all of it and then we'll pick up everything we see. I want to go home. Shut up! We're growing, Grandpa! <laughs> I don't know if you checked the title of the game, but we are growing grandpa. Grandpa has to grow. So shut up and grab the supplies we need to grow grandpa now. I'll clean this space will not be dirty and again until next week. I grab my glue all purpose with magic. I grab this note. That's a picture of grandpa. <laughs> a photo of my late grandfather. Grandpa, I'll rise. We're going to bring him back from the dead. Waluigi looking ass. <laughs> Shut up. What does it say? Mr. PhD. On the reverse side of the photograph, there is more text. Good luck on your trip to the Urals. Stay warm. Who? It, it's so like Grandpa to wish us good luck. But also give him, give us a picture of himself in that good luck message. That's kind of strange. Papers crudely bound together to form a book. Eurasian Step Shamanism and Fusiform Gyrus, an interdisciplinary study in sympathetic magic, a dissertation by Jacob Hart. I know for a fact I don't have to read, nor should I read every single book in this game, because there's a lot of text in this game if you want to read it. But we'll kind of get like the we'll kind of grab the gist of it. Uh, an impetus of this research was the recognition of a particular pattern in fragments of documents relating to magic and magic religious practice. It's a magic book. It is. The girl was not lying. This is about magic. It's about uh, necromancy and sorcery, folk charms relating to love spells, hagiographs, science and their encounters with devils. The list spans many centuries and a great distance from the Levant of, to the Khazar, Kaganit to the border of the modern nations of Russia and the Kazakhstan today. There's a lot of stuff about it. It's a magic book. It's for warlocks. It's a dissertation. It's for magic. We can use this to grow grandpa. I interrupted to ask what she did with these magical, mysterious materials. Grow grandpa! She explained plainly, and then, without missing a beat, she continued on with her story as I watched on in horror and confusion as she described that she was planning to, with these pieces, grow Grandpa. Feeling this was a potent symbol, I stopped her again to ask what she meant. Shut up! <laughs> I gotta grow Grandpa, you, don't, you just don't understand, Boomer! <laughs> Shut up, Boomer! Somewhat puzzled, I did not understand immediately. She explained slowly in an almost insulting manner. Grandpa lives in the cage in the other room, Boomer. The cage behind the door. We grow people in the cage. What? <laughs> what did you say? In the cage. 
You just have to go behind the door. There's a lot of notes on the door. A hastily written note. I've repeatedly called your homes to no avail, and so I am forced to leave this here for you all. I found William sitting in the corner of the enclosure area, seemingly severely concussed. Whiskers was gone in none of its usual hiding places. I immediately suspected the worst. The project thus must be suspended for now. I'm leaving up the usual mirrored coverings we use to keep the af the anthropoidic void sealed. Ah, yes, of course. The anthropoidic void. I've done my best to lock everything on such short notice. It is a hasty fix, but it will require some time to find a more permanent remedy. I am honestly hoping you do not find this note as I intend to lock the house down too. I intend to race off to you, race off to you, to retrieve your lockbox keys. Do not worry about William's key. It and the rest of his equipment is almost certainly deep within whiskers now. What? <laughs> I pray you do not enter this room. No matter how it may appear, William cannot be helped. It is only being kept alive as a means of continuing predation on the rest of us. I will say once again, no matter what stage you may encounter William in, he cannot be helped. I have compassion for the young man, but I found on his person several photos of his late sister, which would imply certain risks he knew he was taking. Our extant research reveals uh, materials have now become possible liabilities either criminal or professional in nature. So I've stashed them away, I believe. I let, I believe I let all of you all know how I might do this if we were ever to experience an event such as this. I hope you all remember what I told you. So long then. Yo, is your name Whiskers? Yo, is your name Whiskers? Whiskers, is that you? Are you a Whiskers? Are you a cursed being that needs to live inside of an anthropoidic void? All right, well. Whiskers, stop doing weird things. Lab orientation, no on an experiment. Do not break the anthropoidic vacuum without my approval. Any anthropoidic forms brought into the enclosure area for testing purposes must not be left in the enclosure area unattended. When not in dormancy, the sample will attempt to take anthropoid uh, shell notes for more. Okay. I'm not going to read all of them in detail. I'm just going to like kind of skim this because there's a lot of writing before we get to like the gameplay of this game, which there is like, this is not a point and click adventure. This has a gameplay aspect to it that we're going to see in a little bit. Samples exposure to some of our neuro neuro neuronal activity is unavoidable. However, it is... The speed at which it is, its des desirous yield is produced that can be dampened by several. Blah, 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 blah. Keep conversations not related to lab work to a minimum. If you begin to suspect you are developing attachments to your colleagues, contact me as soon as possible. Uh. Ritual behavior with the sample, trading, bargaining will result in dismissal from the project. The precise mechanism of the exchange of symbols and gifts required for a requested desirous yield is not known. And even then, anecdotal accounts of success are uh, end in violent death. All right. <laughs> okay, Whiskers. Whiskers got some stuff going on. Don't know if I should stand next to this thing. Uh, offering is especially dangerous, and therefore all lab assistant lunches are to be vegetarian. Did that say fle- is that flesh offering? All right, don't offer uh, Whiskers any meat. Whiskers, don't give Whiskers- uh, There is no- Basement is a no meat zone. As of today, responsibly, this basement is a no meat zone. Last note. Regarding growth cycles, uh, growth cycles are to be terminated after five weeks. Any further development puts uh, us at risk. Termination procedures will be posted and followed with extreme care. With all that out of the way, I welcome you to the project. I look forward to working with you, Dr. Hart. Samples bodily existence cannot be, uh, okay, looks like you're not allowed to be alive for more than five weeks. How long have you been alive? When were these notes posted? I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm going in, I'm going in. Beyond the door in the room, the cage was hidden, concealed in another cloak of inward facing mirrors. Chat, maybe, maybe that's not whiskers. A, a hidden cage lined with mirrors. It's strange, almost poetic. The elaborate fantasy of self-reflection, concealment, captivity. Let me just toss all this tape in the car. Chat, maybe that's not whiskers. Maybe that's just some schmutz. 
Maybe the monster is still in the cage as it should be and hasn't escaped because it's been contained by the, by the mirrors. At the cage, she finally cast her spell, but it was confusing, she confided at first. She took the magic doll, the magic glue, and the photo of her grandpa, and she combined them, and she wished very hard. I can only assume in this fantasy that next her wish would come true. In what child's story would it not? I don't see anything in this cage. Well, I'm going to use my glue. Uh, I'm going to slot in a particular human representation. Uh, this is my representation of what Grandpa would look like if Grandpa was alive, but he's not. He's dead. And I'm going to uh, use a generic human figure, and I'm going to glue them together. We are officially, as of today, growing a new Grandpa. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get excited. I don't know if you're all, uh, you know, responsible enough to handle taking care of this thing, but I hope you are because it's about to get real. Hope you've been paying attention to the notes about taking care of grandpa and what he's not allowed to eat and allowed to eat and what he's allowed to observe and not observe, what he's allowed to be fed, etc., etc. Because as of today, we are pet owners. A tangible symbol of intention and desire. She put grandpa in the cage, assuming that was part of the ritual. She was not clear on how it worked. What precise instructions she would glean from her grandfather's magic book was complicated by her reading comprehension. She wished with all her heart, and then she told me she waited a while for something, anything to happen. And after that time, she began to cry. I cried really hard, she said. I wanted Grandpa to be back. I wanted my parents to stop being so mean. And then it hurt me. It hurt me wish for Grandpa to come back, for my parents to be different. I could feel it through the walls, and it felt me through the air. I asked her what exactly she meant. She could only repeat what she said. By this time, lunch was almost over. I said goodbye to Adrian, and she left to rejoin her class. I was left to consider our conversation. I believe the storytelling strategy I have employed was not unfruitful, but I must probe deeper. She seems fucking crazy, dear. She seems cuckoo. This is wild. Although I can be sure of nothing, I interpret the impressions I get may begin to help me get an idea of the right questions to ask. Knowledge you acquired this week has given you access to certain topics or keywords you can discuss with Grandpa. You have learned conversation topic wish. Consider discussing this when Grandpa emerges. Alright chat, we're entering the gameplay por por uh, portion of the game. We were in the intro up until now. We have entered the gameplay. Uh, this is a pet this is a pet game. This is like playing Nintendogs. We're playing Nintendogs, but instead of a Nintendog, we are playing with Grandpa, uh, our our eldritch being. You've also gained the following keyword. Shell. Week two. I met again with Adrian in order to address her emotional outbursts in the past few weeks. It is our second time meeting, and while it is standard practice to have multiple sessions with a troubled student, as I assemble a report for the counseling department, I could not help but think, as we sat down in my office, that Adrian had already seemed to show a remarkable change in self-esteem and confidence, and perhaps my and Mrs. Richardson's estimation of her was as emotionally di disturbed was erroneous. The paralyzing shyness and withdrawn attitude Adrian possessed last week was not entirely diminished, but she seemed to hold herself differently this week. However, this only lasted as long as our conversation pertained to initial introductory pleasantries. When I began once again asking about her parents, her feelings regarding her new school and her new home, she quickly lost what new confidence she had gathered up and withdrew again into herself. So once again, I partook in some collaborative make-believe, but this time I was aided by the fact that I had managed to do some research into Adrian's grandfather, and I had some insight into what she might actually be finding in the basement. Now, this may be overstepping my bounds, some as a school counseling caseworker, but this was all in the service of making Adrian comfortable and happy in this learning environment. In any case, I was able to dig up information regarding the grandfather by inquiring at the university in town. Not that I make it a habit of sleuthing, but I had a suspicion the grandfather was a professor there, or at least some sort of researcher. Due to the fact that the newly constructed laboratory on the campus I drive by every day bears his name in memorial. He was some sort of anthropologist or linguist or neuroscientist. I did not have to dig that deep before the scope of this work became dizzying 
and I ran up against the limits of my undergraduate education. But back to the make-believe. Ew! Ew! I forgot she looks like that! Ew! Ew! Jesus, kid! Kid! <laughs> kid, wear a bag on your head! Or something! Anything! You can't go to school like this! Oh, you look like a potato! Dreadful being! What is your grandpa like? Is he a smart man? Not anymore, but I'm teaching him. So he's grown a good deal then. You've been feeding him well? Yeah, he's getting bigger, but he has a lot of room in his cage. He's still behind the bars? Yeah, well, he might be able to climb out eventually. There's this vent in the ceiling. Well, perhaps if he climbs out, I could meet him someday. Yeah, maybe, but he's not ready to leave. He can't take care of himself. I have to feed him. Pick up after him. Ah, you store the food in your lunchbox? That's nice of you to share. He can almost talk. You can't speak to him? He doesn't... doesn't have a mouth. Kinda. How do you feed him, then? He has a mouth on the outside, on his shell. Or the stuff that's his skin. I don't under- Kid, you're fucking weird. Like, I just don't understand what you're talking about. Maybe you can, like, go through a typical day with Grandpa with me? Sure, whatever. I asked her to explain exactly how she goes about growing her Grandpa, and Adrian began another tale. According to Adrian, in the week that had passed, much had changed in the basement. Another day, another dollar. I should go visit Grandpa first. Grandpa! Grandpa! I'm coming in. Grandpa, wake up! It was scary at first, she said. The way he moved, the way the doll's skin covered him. I wanted to interject, but this somehow seemed inappropriate, but I kept listening. When I look at him, she continued, when I think about him, he grows and moves. It's like he's growing for me. So he's growing bigger now? I asked. Yeah! Every day! Grandpa! Guys, it's Grandpa! Look! This begins the actual growing part of growing your grandpa. Beneath the doll's burlap skin, the follicles knit together what resembles a proper person, your grandpa. You are in charge of its cognitive development and diet until it is able to sustain itself. Currently, you are observing, Grandpa. Please click the arrow back button below for a brief tutorial of your duties as his caretaker. All right. Here we can see a variety of options regarding growing your Grandpa. Highlighted red are the objectives related to feeding and teaching Grandpa important messages regarding Grandpa's recent activity will also appear here. You will need to find it food and learning material before you can move on to the next week. Some foods will make Grandpa happy, others merely content. Some foods will make Grandpa disgusted to the point of nausea. Learning material is also scattered throughout the basement. Seek out vocabulary cards intended to help teach English and basic anthropoidic concept information. The options highlighted in red are to ensure are, are related to navigating around Grandpa's enclosure. The Go to Grandpa option will let you perform all actions directly relating to Grandpa feeding, teaching, observing, etc. Study, you can learn stuff, kitchen, get food, help, get help. Save game, save game. What are you, dumb? More buttons may or may not appear depending on your development of Grandpa, so watch out for them. One final note, take care to explore the basement at your leisure. However, due to the anthrop anthropic nature of clutter and trash, different weeks may allow you to find things you had not previously discovered. Good luck. I'd like to save my game. All right, chat. It's time to take care of our Grandpa. First of all, we gotta get him a snack. He's probably hungry. So let's go make him some food. Let's go check the fridge. That's a brown banana. It looks edible. Grandpa might like this. All right, granddad. You like bananas, old man? <laughs> Feed glue, maybe. We also have lettuce. Looks edible. Grandpa might like this. How do you feel about salad, old man? Let's prepare some food. Soft fruit, a vegetable, unappealing item. We don't have anything unappealing. So it looks like we're good. All right, uh, that's the kitchen. Let's go to the study corner. Look over documents. Oh, this is all of our old documents that we have. Examine educational poster. What's this? 
Throw that throw the alphabet out. We don't fucking need any of this. Throw this all out. What do we got here? Set of procedures regarding disposal and internment. We don't have to worry about disposing of grandpa. He's fine. I'm not reading this, but I will teach him the conversation topic biohazard bin. So when it comes up later, we won't have to teach it to him when I need him to climb inside of it so I can dispose of him when it's been five weeks. But we're not reading it right now. I don't need to. We'll ask him that well, he'll know what biohazard bin means. Anything in these filing cabinets? Wow, that's a lot of garbage. What is this? Cashews! I found some old nuts inside of the filing cabinet. Grandpa might want to eat this. Let me throw the, oh, there's so much garbage in here. Let me get some of this out of here. I gotta find something to feed Grandpa. He's gonna get so freaking angry, man. I need something better than bananas! What is this? It was said... Hang on. Read this. It was said to pass from one family of step people to another, but pressed on its ultimate origin, illegible, somewhere to the south, coiled in a bowl covered in incantations, buried upside down by a graveyard, a commonplace antiquity, a common late antiquity demon trap. Is this a demon? Nah, Grandpa's not a demon. Gra Grandpa's not a demon. Chat, don't worry. Grandpa, Grandpa, no demon. He's not a demon. I'm gonna search these other filing cabinets for food and anything I can teach Grandpa, because he, um... Grandpa's unfortunately illiterate. He doesn't know... Guys, we gotta learn... We gotta teach Grandpa early to be a gamer. I just won't... I don't want him to be a dork like the last one. You know? I don't want him to be uncool. Linguistics module Grandpa. Teach Grandpa this word to read the notes of past educators. Okay. I can teach him the word Grandpa now. That's like the most important word. That's good. Filing cabinet three. Clear this one out, and then we'll look into teaching grandpa how to say grandpa. Teach him letters. He doesn't need to know letters. When's he gonna need that? What he does need to know is how to say the words. Is there even anything in here? This cabinet's completely fucking empty. Shit. Whatever. Medical imaging device. I'm not getting anything out of that right now. Grandpa! 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 I, I, I start ringing the bell. Grandpa! Grandpa! What's he looking? How's he looking today? You examine Grandpa, noting his movements, respiration, and general mood. Grandpa seems sort of sluggish and bored. You get the feeling it may be more content and readily cooperative once fed and taught a word or two. It's bored! He's bored. Hang on. Some of these windows before I have to do this next part because I didn't lock my mouse. He's, he needs mental stimulation, just like a just like a cat. I'm going to attempt to communicate. No response. I'm gonna teach him, and if he does well when I teach him, I'll feed him. All right, Grandpa. Would you like to start the tutorial before you start? Okay. Uh, no. I know how to do this. Teach word, Grandpa. You approach the small window set in the jail bars. Grandpa? So chat, this is how it works. Essentially, we are gonna guide him with the mouse how to speak, and we get more progress towards him saying the word the more we're in the red block. Grr, gr 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 yeah, say it with me, Grandpa. Gr Grandpa, you gotta say grand, gr grandpa, grand. Say the A right. Say the A right, or you don't get any cashews today. It's just an A. You go ah. You go ah. You go ah. All right. Not uh, ah. Deep within Grandpa's strange membranes, phony. Grand. His first word! Chad, we taught him how to say grandpa! That's my fucking grandpa right there! <laughs>
<laughs> he got there. Having completed the lesson, you take a look back at the vocabulary module card and the notes there written by administrators of the past. Grandpa, part of the vocabulary and vocalization module, E81 family. General pronunciation comments, usual trouble with articulation, voice thin and raspy, possibly undevel underdeveloped larynx module comments, see below. We've done several sessions of what we are calling familial relations simulation. Uh, I and a co-researcher sit in chairs opposite the enclosure. We are wearing the usual masks. And we begin to act out a scene, mostly through improvisation, that might roughly resemble a kitchen table conversation between an immediate family. Repeated trials would reveal, although our simulated conversation was purposefully vague and unspecific regarding persons and identities, we would only address each other as brother, father, sister, etc., etc. It soon became apparent the encoded information and associations we unconsciously draw upon when hearing and speaking these words was being picked up on by whiskers in its psi-type field of reception and interpretation of brain-slash-mind event-slash-semantic... You're telling me this thing can read our mind? Can whiskers read my mind? I'm not, I don't want, I don't want to try to interpret that. My co-researcher William noticed this in a simulation where Whiskers was given the role of a sister and he, as a brother, I was the father. Whiskers began responding to certain prompts with unusual specificity. Specificity. As well as, I'm just getting all tongue-tied because there's so many words. As well as a general pattern and timber of speech that continued with unusual consistency. As soon as the simulation ended, we left the enclosure area. William let me know that Whiskers was almost certainly drawing from encoded memories of his late sister, mapping out exactly what regions and centers of neural activity. So you're telling me this thing reads your mind and based on who you want it to be, tries to copy the memories of who it thinks you want it to be like a sort of parasite brain copier. So it's not an S. It isn't like actually making a clone of my grandpa. I've just given it, I've, I've let it see what grandpa looks like. And now it's gathering like hot. It's just gathering little tidbits from my brain as I talk to it about what it's like a ditto. It's like, it's kind of like Pokemon's ditto. Mapping out exactly what regions and centers of neural activity are intercepted by the psi type field will take extensive neuroimaging that we do not have at this site. Currently, we only have less precise portable equipment. However, our experiences so far are eerily in line with folk knowledge and folk explanations regarding the being's access to desires. And we can begin to infer it has access to certain portions of the limbic system and the ventral temporal cortex. You step away from the bars and store the module card at the document table. All right, Grandpa. Looks like now that you learned how to say grandpa, it's time for you to have a snack. Let's get you fed. Grandpa! I bang on the glass. Like a, like a, like a, like you're banging on a fish tank to get his attention. He jerks around, scared. Grandpa! It's time to feed you! You approach the small window set in the jail bars. Grandpa, click on the nostrils left of its mouth with a handful of food. If Grandpa is enticed by the smell, he'll want to eat it. Grandpa, Grandpa, I got, I got, I got banana, got banana for Grandpa. Where's your nose? Where's your nose at? Grandpa seems indifferent to the smell, but will eat it if he has to. All right, picky little shit. Okay, he doesn't want bananas. Uh, what about how you feel about lettuce, Grandpa? You like that? <laughs> like lettuce? Like the smell of lettuce? I can't find his fucking nose. It's neutral reaction. This will say it's hunger, but not much else. All right, Grandpa. How you feel about dusty cashews? Mm, mm, mm. Get a get a whiff of that nut. Grandpa seems indifferent but to the smell, but he will eat it if he has to. All right, Grandpa, you know if you don't want to eat it, we just won't feed you today. Grandpa makes a plaintive whine, clearly disappointed in the lack of sustenance. Wee, wee, wee. I'll be right back! I slam the door. I gotta find him better food. Let me check out this bulbous growth. 
Something appears to be growing from the wall. You take a closer look. A pulsating sac. A slimy membrane that that is its skin seems to contain something. You might be able to get it open with a blade. Let me just look for food in the trash. We're not not feeding Grandpa, okay? It's just, I gotta... I wanna make sure he likes it. I don't want Grandma, Grandpa to, like, fucking kill me. Corroded battery. This probably isn't food. Grandpa might eat it, however. <laughs> Grandpa! Hello! Teach Grandpa this word to read... Alright, we got the word hello. We can teach Grandpa the word what's up. So I can't go over there, it's too dark. Cabinet, let me check this cabinet. There's gotta be more, there's so much trash in this fucking place. Look, we're gonna teach, we're gonna teach Grandpa the word hello, and then we'll teach him memes. Blueberries! That's blueberries, dude! Fastest garbage collector in the West, Jen. No one does it quite like me. Those are just heads, huh? Before we... What is this? An account of an acquisition. Before we began, we had us all cover our faces completely in earthen where a pot was. Blah, 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 blah. And on the inside, as we stole brief glances at it, we could see the interior was inlaid with mirrors. The uh, blah, 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 gave it small pieces of dough, spoiled food, chicken feet, uh, blah, 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 keeping it content. The keeper gestured toward the small bag where the food composted and told us to be careful not to feed it any meat. I asked if the rotting food was enough to sustain it, however, how it might get nutrients from any of this. The keeper regarded me seriously and said it did not matter what it was fed, the act of feeding itself was what mattered. The act of feeding flesh is another act, however. He then gave- So everyone else was a bad- Dude, I'm gonna feed this thing meat. I'm gonna give this thing meat and Grandpa's gonna like me more than everyone else. Okay, I don't- I, I don't give a damn about the grave warnings. We're gonna feed Grandpa meat! I won't have a vegan Grandpa! Alright? I won't have a vegan Grandpa! My Grandpa's going to eat meat! Grandpa wants a burger. This is locked. I can tell from a mile away. There's a painting here. What is this? A folder full of radiographic images. Okay, cool. I'll check that out later. Like, I just want to find a food that Grandpa will be like... <laughs> you know? There's probably no meat just sitting around anyways. You know? I don't know why that beeping... That tone's happening. I just turned it down. Fiberglass insulation. <laughs> Grandpa, you have to help me get rid of all this garbage, dude! My parents are still fighting upstairs and I'm running out of garbage bags! Eat this now! Grandpa! <laughs> it only knows the word Grandpa, so I assume that's all it will say. I think there was still some trash up at the top, which is why I'm doing this again, because I think I didn't fully clean it. Don't know why this one corner has a tone to it. I missed this. Here we go. Clean until next week. Just got one more trash pile to check out. The garbage gives off EMP, like it gives off an electromagnetic pulse. I'm getting a tone in my ears that... A simple paper doll. This might be useful in the construction of magic symbols. But why would I, but why? But why would I want to make a magic symbol? Sir? But sir, why would I want one of those? Why would I want a magic symbol? Grandpa! Hang on, let me check. Is the vent back to normal? Harry thing that was there is before is gone. Cool. Grandpa! Grandpa, I'm back! Grandpa! Grandpa! Get off of that chair now! I have to feed you. Again. Bring your mouth to the, bring your mouth to the, like, thing. How do you feel about batteries? Does this do it for you? Give this a smell. You like batteries? Come on. Dude, where's your fucking nose? 
Oh, I see them now. One, two, three, four. Okay. What did he say? Did he say he liked that? Did he say he liked that? I, I wasn't looking because I was looking at the fact that I could find his nose now. Did he say he liked it? He hated it? He grimaced. Picky little fuck. He oh, you don't want to eat batteries. <laughs> Grimaces at the sterile artificial shell. Grandpa, sometimes... Okay, hang on. Hang on. I can fix this. Hang on. I can fix this. Wait right there, Grandpa. I'm going back to the kitchen. <laughs> banana battery. Grandpa, I made you a banana with fiberglass in it. Enjoy. Man, my kid's an idiot, huh? Grandpa, got something for you to eat today. Conceal, enjoy. Nom, nom, nom. Although quickly consumed, the meal seems to be causing some indigestion. And with a sudden lurch, Grandpa empties its stomach onto the floor. Now where the hell is all that stuff you've been eating? I know there used to be a second chair in there. Grandpa eats anything he can get his hands on. Spit it out. It's for your own good, Grandpa. They might, he might have eaten a rat or something. I gotta check on him. The contents pull together in front of the cage. I fucking knew it. All right, Grandpa, now here. I got something for you that you'll actually like. Here's some berries. Here's some berries. That was sufficient. That's a good Grandpa. That's a good Grandpa. Grandpa silently slides back to its corner. He needs more digestible food. All right, Grandpa. Here, I'll give you some extra food. Unfortunately, it's going to be the lettuce. <laughs> Eat it. Mmm. Lettuce. That's filling. That's got a lot of calories. Grandpa grunts in appreciation, locomotes towards its favorite corner. Its favorite corner. All right. So, I want to go back to Grandpa because I kind of want to check the stomach. Grandpa, I fucking knew you were gonna pull this shit from the moment I got out of bed today. You ate my fucking keys? You're just like my cat. You're just like my dog, Grandpa. You just eat anything off the floor you can find. I got, I should've had to, I, I should've taken you to the vet. And next time I will. Next time I'm gonna have to take you to the vet. My car keys. <laughs> Still somewhat wet. This might help you explore more of the basement. I'll be right back. Bad boy. Bad grandpa. You try the safe lock with the key you found. It pops open. A photo of your mother as a young woman. The recognition of this face kicks off a cascade of emotion and meaning deep within your psyche. Ugh. Oh my god. Grandpa, cancel, I want to grow a new mom that isn't such a bummer. Can you, can we like peel the face off? And like get a new one? Can I attempt to communicate? No response? Okay. Alright, Grandpa. Hey! Pay attention. Alright, this is important. Come over here. I'm teaching you an important word today, so don't fuck it up. Hey grandpa, you got to try that one again, man. I if you fucking said that to if you fucking said that around a corner and I was and I couldn't see you, you're going to get hit in the head with a hammer. All right, that's not a hello, that's a monster sound. You need to work on your, you're not, you're not getting, you're 
tongue evidently doesn't have enough like mobility to do the L properly. So you're kind of doing like that's what you sound like. Do it again. I I fucking feed him a battery. Do it again now. I don't want another shit, Grandpa. All right. <laughs> the last one was garbage. Having completed the lesson, all right, we can look back at the notes. Hello. Sloppy articulation. I also noted that. We are already encountering some difficulties as Whiskers' subjectivity is so much determined by a diverse and dynamic array of influences it attempts to mimic the thoughts and desires it passively intercepts, and these imitations go on to structure the basis of its identity. Dude, Grandpa couldn't fucking say hello either, and that's why Whiskers was destined to fail. All right, that's all I'm going to say. He, he... The game was rigged from the start. Grandpa used to always do this thing where he'd say hello, like, ha! <laughs> he couldn't, he, he was fundamentally busted as far as, uh, as far as language was concerned. Only later in Whiskers' growth cycle does it begin to form an identity or identities that are coherent and capable of resembling a sane, rational human being when engaged in conversation. One must imagine how, how hard it would be to converse with someone who is not yet oriented in one particular way towards who or how they are because they might have 20 different honest answers to those questions, all of them mixed and muddled together. Because of this, we have started with the basics of conversation. Greetings, partings, identifying one another, forming questions, etc., etc. It is fortunate Whiskers current, Whiskers current growth, number 19, I believe, has developed a mostly accurate human mouth simulation. Hello was a bit of a challenge in the previous growth, as it had failed to develop an adequate organ to act as a human tongue. Mine sounded like it did not have a human tongue. Mine, mine sounded kind of like, hey, ha, ha, which is like a, I didn't hear any tongue in there. That's what I was telling him. Do I have to empty his stomach every day? It seems like I have to empty it every day. Well, I mean, I explored. Oh, wait, I do have one more thing to do. Study corner. Imaging device. So this is an image of. What? Propagation number 21, day 19, after dormancy, anth vacuum broken, yes, term 21. Intriguing results with regard to the mimic hypothesis. A participant entered a sealed chamber adjacent to whiskers, which had been freed from the anthropomorphic vacuum, constructed quite economically from plastic and broken mirrors. The first propagation's original earthenware vacuum was shattered during the movement. Between the two, there was a semi-opaque glass panel that allowed observation both ways. The human participant was asked to think of someone in, pro in popular consciousness, fictional or no, and cotigate on their image. Personality, face, if possible, voice if possible, etc. Our participant chose Jesus of Nazareth, and within weekly repeated exposures to the participants' images, provocation number 21 became Jesus of Nazareth! Ladies and gentlemen, he's back again! Jesus, JC is back again, baby! He rose again, this time from Whiskers himself. The second coming of God! <laughs> Hang on. Wait. Resembled an anthropoid Nazarene in the fold of its spines. Wait, he's only present in the spines. Previous human-oriented tests have always bore out a result that Whiskers would form an anthropoid team member, be it me or Dr. Hart or Gerald, and we assumed... It was merely mimicking one of us. Dr. Hart has always contended the desirous yield or the anthropoid reproduction Whiskers creates when it, when in contact with human beings has always been based on the conception and relation to the person through someone else. So you're telling me with this framework, the desirous yield is not actually a replica of a person or if it is, it is only a replica of the fiction of the person generated in the mind of another. Desirous Yield was not Jesus Christ, but the participants' image of Jesus, assembled from their religious upbringing, religious artwork, depictions in popular culture, etc. Never mind, scratch that, scratch that, that's not Jesus. That's not really Jesus. That's like, that could be, that could be just as, just as much just like a Jesus Christ superstar from the world famous, obviously musical movie, Jesus Christ Superstar. We could be dealing with a Jesus Christ superstar Jesus right now. What's that, huh? False idol. 
This radiograph was taken before the destruction of the growth cycle, while Whiskers was rendered unconscious via fumigation. It seems like every successive propagation, the stem cells in the organism work a little faster, but I'm not paranoid. Yes, it's technically deathless, yes, but we're burning up whatever knowledge it's gained when we incinerate it. I don't believe in magic just yet. There's some other pictures here. Uh, this one is propagation number two, day zero after dormancy. Uh, broken... What the hell is this? We have taken to calling it whiskers. Though, the, of course, some have interpreted it as hair or needles or quills, but whiskers is more accurate as needles are really more like supersensory follicles or spines. The nerve nets distributed throughout the morphology and these spines resemble those of the genus Hydra, but have myelin sheaths that are functionally the same as vertebrae. We can see in the x-ray, each spine is laden with dense optical arrangements similar to compound eyes. They're all eyes? The Hydra connection is assuredly worth investigating with regards to the organism's capacity for regeneration and anecdotal deathlessness. It is certain a robust enough creature to inspire a marvel that is not untinged, to inspire marvel that is not untinged with fear. We'll go through the rest of these next week. We're gonna... Grandpa, thanks for hanging out. I'm gonna go now. I fed it lettuce. And I fed it battery bananas. I acquired a lot of stuff. Knowledge you acquired this week has given you access to new conversation topics to discuss with Grandpa, but Grandpa can't talk. You've gained the topic language. Consider discussing this when Grandpa emerges. Okay. Week three. Mrs. Richards approached me the other day in order to remark on Adrian's development. She noted how much more at ease she appeared when she called uh, when called upon in class and when asked to participate in group exercises. I told her I had seen this change happening as well, and that as much as I would like to take credit for it, I can only guess dimly at what might be reshaping her attitude. It's probably something to do with the grandpa, the extremely unsettling grandpa. Mrs. Richards position posited that it was perhaps Adrian's family moving into their grandfather's property that caused the change. It apparently is out in the country, in a wooded area, full of wide open space and far from the bustle and noise of the city. The grandfather, Dr. Jacob Hart, had jointly purchased the land with the university he was employed with and began constructing what was in what he was intending to be a satellite campus for a burgeoning psychological anthropology program. He had a hand in establishing. Only one building ever ended up being constructed after Dr. Hart died in a car accident when driving back from the property one day, eerily, at almost at the exact same time. A grad student who was assisting, assisting Dr. Hart on some sort of project at the property vanished without a trace. The property sat in disuse for years as it was tied up in legal battles between Dr. Hart's next of kin, the university, the vanished grad student's family. That could have been a coincidence. They should. Uh, who cares? And the other students Dr. Hart was working with. Eventually, the case was settled out of court. Only recently did the property fall into the possession of Adrian's mother. Obviously, I was not going to relay this whole tragic story to Adrian, who for all I know believes her grandfather is still to be living in the basement of his home. Besides, I thought she might already know all this. Perhaps the elaborate story she was constructing was her own way of escaping the morbid details of a life, or perhaps lives, cut short by the cruel force of fate and the cynical adults who squabbled in the aftermath. I determined perhaps the storytelling she was and continues to engage in, should not be encouraged by me, at least not in the way I went about it before where I made active inquiries into the strange fantasy of a semi-sentient ball of skin. When I saw Adrian, I did not bring up her grandpa or ask questions about his growth. Adrian could not stop talking about it, however. I had no choice but to weather her bizarre and enthusiastic effusions about her new best friend. Ow! How many times I gotta tell you not to come into this office without the bag? Put it on your head, kid! I hate you! Freak! Adrian, maybe we can talk about something else. I'm not sure I'm following you exactly. He's gotten really big! He has so many whiskers that come out and I can see them move around when I think about him. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm so happy Grandpa's back! He's so much cooler than Mom and Dad! Once again, for what it's worth, I've put down the story she told me as best as I could. Adrian once again told me about growing her Grandpa. Grandpa Day! 
It's time to feed Grandpa. But first, let me loot the trash. I gotta find food for him, or else he'll never grow big and strong. I have to feed the Grandpa now. I gotta find some garbage for him. He loves eating trash. Kiwi. Looks edible. Grandpa might like this. Hell yeah, he's gonna like that. He better. Lest he wants to incur my wrath. He better like it. It's not a charity here. Nothing. Waste of my time. What is that? What the hell is that thing? Oh, it's just more garbage. What if there's just not anything new in this place? What if I truly have every... Well, I mean, I got that kiwi earlier. Nothing in here. Bottom drawer. Isn't gonna match. That's a wallet. I should probably take the money out of that. I might need to go buy food for Grandpa at this point. Did I already check this painting? Well, I can't do anything with it. What if Grandpa's dead? We never thought about that. What if my cat? What if he just dies, like of natural causes? What if my character just thinks that Grandpa died of natural causes and thinks about it too hard, and then Grandpa down here just like is like, oh fuck, it's time, and just like offs himself. Potato. Life. Gra teach Grandpa this word. I'm gonna teach him life, so he'll always not want to kill me. Life is better than being dead. So just be cool. Indecision. That might be too complicated for Grandpa. Potato, tomato. I'm not teaching him my brand, because what if he gets out of the game and tries to, like, get me? Says who? <laughs> True. Nothing. Can't do anything about these bulbous growths. Yet another pulsating sack grows in the corner of the basement. Yeah, I got nothing I can do with the bulbous growths. Grandpa! Grandpa! Bang, 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 bang. Wow, you're in my face today. What's up? You examine Grandpa, noting its movements. Grandpa's gums are bleeding slightly, and its skin seems overly dry. It may need a food packed with vitamin C. A kiwi fruit would be an excellent remedy. I was actually planning on, uh... I was planning on, uh, keeping this kiwi for myself. He's got scurvy. <laughs> Grandpa, you gross bastard! Hang on, you want to communicate? No response. All right, Grandpa. Here's the thing. No way, no, no, don't, 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 don't do that yet. Let's go to the kitchen corner. Is there any new stuff in the fridge? Pear. Love it. What about in the lower fridge? Strawberry. Love it. He's gonna, he's gonna get a lot of fruit. Fruit's good for him. Study corner. Anything new that I should know about? <laughs> Nothing. Dude, I'm getting... I keep thinking I'm getting faster at this, like, garbage thing, and then I miss it, like, 18 times and look like a fucking idiot. Nothing new in there, either. Filing cabinet three is the one. Last one. After this, everything in this entire building's been cleaned out again. And we'll have, I guess, the only things that we can teach Grandpa this week in our inventory. Dude, I, I'm gonna be- I'm gonna say something controversial. Grandpa's kind of worse than old Grandpa. As of now... He hasn't really done anything to really blow me away. You know, he's not... He's not that cool. Grandpa, I'm gonna teach you- I'm gonna teach you how to pronounce the word life. Come over here. He's gonna probably pronounce it- uh, No, he's gonna pronounce it- Because uh, he can't use L because he doesn't have a tongue. Say the L now! I can see a tongue in there! I know you have one, you're just being lazy!
life. Having completed the lesson, I've got the information. Life. At week three of growth number 24, Whiskers appeared to recall some information from a previous growth cycle. We cannot be sure that this was really the case. For all we know, what we interpreted as it re recollecting this information was really it drawing semantic content from one of our recollections of it and redeploying it without rationality or contextualization. For the sake of our safety and for the sake of the scientific inquiry, we are attempting to draw out from Whiskers whether it somehow retains knowledge from previous cycles in its morpholatic nucleus. We did not think it was possible the nucleus, though complex and incredible in its regenerative abilities, was capable of this, and that the nerve network that grew from it made up the base of Whiskers' mind. And so we are now attempting to ask Whiskers, as best we can, if it has ever died, or what it might remember if it did. Hey! Hey, Whiskers! <laughs> Do you know, like, you don't, like, remember any of the times that we've, like, you know, like, like, kind of like, you know, let, you know, you don't remember any of those times we've kind of, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't, you don't remember those, right? You don't remember, like, the last 20... Hey, Whiskers number 24, you don't remember any of the times that we've, uh, horribly, uh... You don't remember those, right? Whiskers, you're not done. Hey, I didn't say class was over, asshole. I gotta teach you indecision. This is a hard one. We're upgrading the word difficulty. <laughs> he's gonna bungle this one so bad, dude. I can tell he's not gonna be able to say this. The, the note's just going to say, don't use this one. It's too much for him. What am I even bothering for? He's barely, s I, I haven't heard a single letter come out right so far. Let's see here. Whoa. He actually got that one pretty good. That was actually the best he's done. Grandpa, that's the best you've done. You win a gold star. You win a gold star, Grandpa. That's the best you've done. We are introducing the latest growth of Whiskers to more subtle social cues and testing its ability to judge mental states of participants in conversation. The semantic content that flows to whisker via, Whiskers via its psi field is still becoming muddled and slipped without distinction in the conversation, although our intention instilling in it a solid theory of mind will perhaps make it begin to understand what we do not know. That we do not know what it knows or know what we are. That is a, that is a long run on sentence, my guy. One would think a theory of mind seems to develop as part of its maturation process. In order to hunt sapient beings, it must be able to deceive them. In order to deceive, it must be able to make certain metacognitive judgments. For example, if their deception appears to be working, how one ought to be deceived? We may never see it develop a theory of mind anytime soon, as Dr. Hart has disallowed a cycle of whiskers growth to live into the beginnings of maturity. Until now, slash me goes to feed it batteries. I need to go to the kitchen to whip up another good meal. Potato. Hang on, I should actually check which one of these he likes first. He'll eat it. Nah, he'll eat the potato, I can tell. Potato battery, yes. I know he ate more keys. <laughs> Whiskers! Whiskers! I want you to eat this potato. Now. Nom nom. Nom nom nom. Spit it out. All right, whiskers. All right, whiskers. Now I know you've been, I know you got the scurvy. I know, I know you've got the scurvy. So I got you this kiwi that I found inside of this cabinet that's likely decades old. You want a kiwi? <laughs> Eat it. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I'm also gonna feed you 
A strawberry. One. Okay. Wait right here. Grandpa silently slides back to his corner. I just want to check the pile of... Where'd you get this? Whiskers, where'd you get this? Why are you eating these? I have to, I'm gonna have to take you to the vet if you keep doing this, Whiskers. I'm gonna have to take you to the vet. Wait right here. Bulbous growth. I've cut open the bulbous growth. It's now possible to look inside. You peer into the small opening created by your incision. In the oily cavity, a powerful smell of rot arises, and many small increte beings lay motionless and dead. However, you just barely hear this near silent slithering of something. Or maybe it's just your imagination. Oh! Oh! Just get this all out of the way. Is one of you alive? I wanna feed grandpa meat so he can grow big and strong, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna raise like a vegetarian. I'm not gonna raise a vegetarian, grandpa. Oh! It's alive! Anthropoid Remnant 1, a self-sufficient animal form knit together from years of ambient thoughts left to crawl around the basement. Grandpa may enjoy its flesh. Grandpa, I want to talk to you about little friends. <laughs> Grandpa, I've come here with a collection of topics. I want to discuss, t I want to discuss with you about little friends. Like small friends we have. Grandpa, how do you feel about little friend? Grandpa, here, I feel bad about, I feel, ab I feel bad. I feel bad, so I'm going to give you this. It's an anthropoid. Grandpa th seems excited by the flesh smell and wants to eat it. That's a good boy. My grandpa will not be a weenie. All right, he's going to eat burgers. You're offering a flesh stir something within Grandpa. From within its folds of its body, a wiry, proboscis-like appendage begins to emerge. It may be worth taking a look at this after feeding. Knowledge you've recently acquired has given you access to a new conversation topic with Grandpa. Proboscis. Okay. Grandpa, did you grow some new weird thing? Grandpa grunts in appreciation and locomotes towards his favorite corner. Okay. Grandpa, I'd like to examine this new part. You motion to Grandpa to approach and point to the thin protuberance. Grandpa silently ambles closer to the bars and fully extends it towards you. He's got a little hand now. The minuscule needle extends from its tip. Uh, there appears to be one more thing you must give, if only for the sake of propriety. Do you want fucking glue? A tangible symbol of intention and desire. Do you want... Do you, do you want this pear? I don't know what you want. I made the representation of my mother now, but, uh... I don't think I can give it to him. Offer mother doll. Grandpa doesn't seem interested at the moment. All right, Grandpa, you want to talk? Grandpa accedes to your request. It approaches the bars and begins to unknit its skin. The inner Grandpa, though still not fully formed, is revealed it may be fruitful to speak with it if it can respond. Grandpa! Guys, it's Grandpa! Look, it's just like Grandad. Grandad, you're back after all this time. It's him. Grandpapa. Grandpa, I want to ask you about uh, little friends. 
Grandpa still struggles somewhat to speak due to its underdeveloped tongue, mouth, and jaw. However, it manages to rasp out an answer. I grew like seeds off my skin, worms fall off my body, thoughts falling off me, dreams put there by others when I was under the ground. I made only a few shepherds walk through the grave and I saw them lusting for their wives and my skin made their loving faces. I called them out into the darkness with their loved ones. One by one I took their shapes and their skin and blood. It was a time ago before stone buildings. This is classic grandpa. <laughs> before the orders of angels and words and symbols. I'm sorry. Grandpa's thinking. There's a little left over from the others, too. I'm still so hungry for flesh. Part of me is. I would even eat one of them that fell off of me. I can't help it. They grow off of me. They fall off and grow in the dark, grow around me. Damn, Grandpa. That was weird. Grandpa. That was just like my grandpa. I'm gonna ask him about his wish. What's the one thing you, if you had a wish, if you had one wish to make a wish, to make a, uh, you, to make a wish with, what would you, uh, why, what, what would you wish for, grandpa? Hunger is not enough. On the walls of the cave, the Arak can be hunger transformed desires fulfilled by pain this is exactly what grandpa said to me on his deathbed before he fucking died your grandpa doesn't have the right word right now i can only say i love you love is not enough though desire is not enough Pro project it outwards make it true to yourself if only in symbol then it will be enough for me and for you i love you too grandpa this is this is ju I remember this. Grandpa used to say things like this all the time. Grandpa, I want to ask you about the shell you exist in. The shell. Something to grow in. My skin is not the doll's skin. My skin is not your skin either. I can still feel your eyes on me inside my shell. I have many eyes to see, but I don't need them as much as I need your eyes with which I can understand as seeing me. There is a cycle of attention you give me myself, but I'm still not that. Slowly I form a human shape, and you see me more as a human, and I become that. Classic grandpa. Classic grandpa. This is exactly how my child brain remembers grandpa. Grandpa, I want to ask you about the biohazard bin. I think I need to have you climb in in a week. They f keep putting me in that freaking box, dude. <laughs> Damn, Grandpa. Sleeping and then set a light. And then in a box, a box in the corner in the darkness. Wait. Grandpa, you remember dying? Grandpa, you remember dying every time? That's not good. Most of you couldn't read then. The scribe came and wrote what everyone said. They wrote on strips of bark with thin reeds. No, it was not that. It was a paper posted somewhere. It had words to open the box. I was half dead in the box. The parts of me that died was put there for a long time. That part of me and other things they threw in. A refuse pile. Papers they discarded. Grip, I want to ask you about the strange thing that you grew today. Yes, that is a part, like a tongue. I was lost in the mountains and so thirsty. I was walking up a hill and found a lamb and drank from it with my tongue. And I fell asleep for a long time. I woke up as a half-formed child. I had died before. My grieving mother had remade me. We had made a contract and she completed it. I do not remember more. She willikers, Grandpa. Anyways, I gotta get out of here. There's a second bulbous mouth in the I'm gonna need to get him more things to eat. The word. 
me, Grandpa. I'm gonna make you big and strong. I'm gonna make you big and strong just like you always wanted, Grandpa. Come along. My Grandpa is the best Grandpa of all. Everyone knows my grandpa is epic. Grandpa. Can I give you the anthropoid? I cannot. Well, I mean, I can't do anything else with this right now. Grandpa's been cool, but like, honestly, you're kind of fucking creepy. I'm gonna leave. Grandpa, I'm, I'm gonna go, Grandpa. Frankly, <laughs> frankly, I've had enough. I asked you about little friends and you talked about eating your own body parts. So, uh, just gonna tip on that one for today and week. You're cringe. What is cringe? Bye. Week four. Yo, Adrian is still doing really good, but they're kind of freaking me out lately. These grotesque weird stories she keeps telling me are kind of wigging me out, and I can't get over the fact that her face looks kind of like a, a freaky monster. How has your week been, Adrian? Grandpa's pretty much done cooking! He's finished! Oh. He's almost as big as his shell now, he has a face, he can talk! He has four legs! I see. I started writing it down frantically. Once again, Adrian told me about her growing grandpa. Grandpa! 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 I stumble into the room. Grandpa! Grandpa! Grandpa doesn't seem interested in the moment. Salmon stomach contents. Well, I don't have anything attempt to communicate. Grandpa, how are you doing? Grandpa seems fatigued and almost anemic. Some of its spines appear brittle. Perhaps it would be more cooperative if you fed it iron-rich meal like meat. Grandpa, time to eat. Time to eat. We gotta move fast. I'm running out of time. Here, eat it. Nom, nom, nom. Another appendage has grown. How much do I have to teach him today? Two words? Oh my god. We got any meat in the fridge? Jackfruit. Ew! No one I don't I've never tried jackfruit, but it looks ridiculous. Like it looks like a fruit that's just ridiculous, you know what I mean? Like I, I wouldn't eat that. I'm not a I'm not a buffoon, you know what I mean? Does the bulbous growth have more bulb bulbs in it now? Look, Grandpa, this might be the last time we get to feed Grandpa before D&D. So I want to at least make sure that Grandpa's nice and well fed the way he'd want. There's nothing in here to feed him. I... I have to feed Grandpa. There's gotta be more meat to feed Grandpa. I'm running out of meat, Grandpa! No! 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 No, no! Any words to teach him in the garbage pile? Symbol. Mushroom. I found a mushroom to feed Grandpa. Well, hey, mushrooms and 
kind of like meat. They really are, like, mushrooms, let's be honest. I like the flavor of mushrooms, but holy shit, those things are freaky alien monsters. And I'm not too pleased about ever thinking about the fact that I'm eating them. Okay? I don't like thinking about it. I don't like ever thinking about mushrooms. I'm fine eating them. New, bul new bulbous growth just dropped. New bulb just dropped. There we go. There's no way, no way we get two bulbs. No way we get a second bulb. Nope. Let's get out of here. Uh, nothing in here. Never is. Top drawer. I was looking for like one more thing to teach him. So I'm trying to like lightning speed this. I should have started this game a little bit earlier today because I'm not sure I'm going to have time to finish it. Because I, I have a hard stop today. I'm going to try my goddamn hardest because I'm a professional. Someone just tell me when Joe goes live, alright? Because that's our time limit. But they may not start exactly at the right time. Meaning. Alright. That's the two words we have to teach him, so we're good. Okay, uh, we don't need to prepare any food. We gotta feed him two more things that are acceptable. We're gonna feed him one meat and one... So Grandpa's standing! Okay, that is fucking creepy. Grandpa, do you want this doll? He doesn't want it. Grandpa, here's some more food. Grandpa, I got you another anthropoid. Oh, you might, you might want more later. All right, Grandpa, well, here's a mushroom. He likes mushrooms. And he also, I'm gonna give you a mushroom as well. You want a mushroom? Yeah, eat these. Finish, let's finish that for the day. And we'll call it there for you, Grandpa. Go back to your, go back to your favorite corner of the room. Creepy fucking thing. All right, Grandpa, I want to teach you the meaning of meaning. Okay? Saddle on over here. Let's see, if you, let's see how good you are at staying this way. Maybe this one's the best one he does so far. Okay, come on, you old bastard. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that, you old bag? Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, whiskers partially, perhaps, blah, 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 proceeds death. We're going to theorize the process of death. That may stri that the structure of whiskers is compressed back into the morph. All right, so when he dies, he recompresses his existence back into, like, the blob, is what that says. Grandpa, we got to teach you one more thing today. Come on. Simple time. I teach you the word simple. You'll get this one for sure. I got a good feeling, Grandpa. This is the one you nail. Oh, listen to how fast he's getting it. This is the best one he's ever done. Oh my God, Grandpa. He's getting smarter. Oh. He got pretty good at that one. That was close. Uh, it appears, uh, there appears to be nothing written here. It was thoroughly erased. Well, Grandpa, it's been a pleasure. I don't have time to do, uh, the, ever, like, explore everything, so we're just gonna leave. Come back next week. And see how, he, how he's looking with all the meat we've been feeding him. Because I want to see how he's doing. At week five. Who could that be? Come in, uh, Adrian, good to see you. Aren't you a little early, no matter... I, I suppose I have some time now. How have you been? How's your grandpa? Ugh. That's why I wanted to talk to you. Something happened. Oh, what happened? Nothing bad? Nothing bad. It's just... 
Ah, uh, well, I'll tell you about it. Well, last night something woke me up. It was a noise. I thought it was a noise. It was coming from the walls. I could hear it in my bathroom, in my bedroom, but there was something else. Something calling. I could hear it. Just barely. I was afraid somehow Grandpa hurt himself. I had to go find out. Grandpa! I went downstairs in the vent. The place where I found Grandpa, what I grew him with, was open. Do you remember how I told you about the vent and the ceiling behind the bars? Oh, there was something I had to climb up into. And gotten so big he could have done that. Maybe he had gotten trapped somehow in the vent. I had to go see. Granddad had trapped in the fucking vents. <laughs> I got inside and I heard the calling again more clearly this time. Grandpa was definitely in the vent somewhere. I could feel him hearing my thoughts. I got that weird feeling, the sense in the air. I had to go forward. All right, we're going to the vents now. As I moved in closer, the vent had got stuff in it. The kind of slimy, hairy stuff Grandpa would leave around a lot. Yeah, you know, he was definitely close. Grandpa? Something was there at the end, but it wasn't Grandpa. It looked like he'd made it, though. Hey. It was something in the corner and had a weird mouth, and it had its lungs on the outside and drew in just enough air to call out, and then it just stopped breathing, and then something was hanging over me. Grandpa? And then I woke up, and it was a dream. It's just a fucking dream? Your face is- your face is twitching. Are you okay? It looks like you're about to sneeze. I'm fine, it's just Grandpa. You see, it took me a little while to figure it out, but... Later when I was brushing my teeth, I saw one of Grandpa's whiskers poking just out of the space underneath my eye. And I started to remember how in the vent he hid inside of me. It was really fast, I could barely remember, but... Soon I started to feel him sliding around inside my head. Behind my forehead, and behind my eyes and my nose. It doesn't hurt, it's just ticklish. I'm glad I can be, I can be with him. I can feel him. I think he wants to meet you. Part of him is moving down my arm. Uh, Adrian, you're kind of fucking freaking me out. I'm calling the police. Go to the nurse now. You should really meet him. I've told you so much about him here. What are you doing, Adrian? You're looking very ill. Just hang on a second. Jeez. Just stay still. He's gathering, waiting at my fingertips. Uh. Why do you look like that? You don't have to be afraid. Look. Oh, gee. So I got one of the two endings because I fed him meat. Well, that's an extremely unsettling game with a lot of lore that unfortunately we weren't able to watch because uh, I unfortunately ran out of time, but... Very cool story. Very, very good writing. Extremely unsettling visuals. It costs $5 to get on Itch.io, and I think it's well worth it. Uh, so you can definitely go play through it properly and not fuck it up and find all the cool shit. Uh, really cool. Uh, chat, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to be going over to Joe's channel uh, to participate in the pilot of the new D&D show. He's running. I am in it. It's going to be a good time. I urge you to... I urge you. I urge you to be there. Okay? It's going to be a good time. But I'm going over there immediately, and I'm already semi-late, so I'm just going to send you over there. Thank you if you donated, gifted subs, bits, etc. Super kind as always. It's been a pleasure. I am fucking out of here. I will see you all tomorrow at 3 p.m.-ish. EST for a uh, real stream. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I have no idea, but it should be a good time. Should be a good time. Late, how typical. I'm raiding into him, all right? It's fine. It's fine. All right. I'll see you all over there. Goodbye.